رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا Today inshallah ta'ala we start with Sutul Fatiha very quickly and uh, let us start by understanding what is Fatiha as an overall Okay, Fatiha is the surah it is the song of my life you have to make this the song of your life it is the motivation of your life. It is the opening prayer. It's the yearning. Dua meaning what? It's a dua. It's a yearning. This dua, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what in this dua? You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance in dua, this dua, right? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. And you're asking for guidance for what? Which is the main central ayah of this, this surah, which is iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, let us please become your true, true, true servants and only from you. Only from you we seek help to do that. So Fatiha is about making the right decisions. That let me make the most right decisions that will make you happy, and and help me make the most right decisions like those people who you favored, and not of those people who earned your anger. Who are the people who earned Allah's anger? Those people who knew the knowledge, knew the truth, like the people before us. Okay, the uh, for example. The people of Bani Israel, they knew the truth, but they weren't able to act upon it. This earns Allah's anger, and this will be clear in Surah Al-Baqarah when we get there. And then you have, وَلَضَّالِينَ These are the people that are confused, wandering, they don't know where they are. They, don't, they, they haven't even gotten the knowledge. They're just lost. And so, with this, inshallah ta'ala, we begin with Bismillahir Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Rahman is the mercy of Allah that is, that is, you can say, uh, is like a spontaneous and powerful, but it is temporary. This is why Allah is Rahman for the people of this dunya, all of them. And Allah is Rahim to everyone. All the names of Allah that fall on the weight of, or in the scale of, or in the pattern of Rahim, Fa'il, Jamil, Qadir, Alim, you know, uh, all of these names of Allah, Halim, right? These names of Allah, they have the sense of permanence. Allah's mercy, that's permanent. In terms of its quantitativeness, it is permanent. And qualitatively, Ar-Rahman. All the names that are on the weight of, of, of the pattern of Rahman, like Ghadban, angry. You get angry, and then you feel, then the anger goes away. It's temporary. Atshan, you know, Atash, thirsty. Atshan, extremely thirsty. It, you're extremely thirsty, drink water, and then that is gone. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah who is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This ayah number two is extremely important here. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This will become more important in the surahs that have to do with dua. Mukhlisina lahuddin. Mukhlisina lahuddin. You'll see this over and over again. Sutul Zumar and Sutul Fusilat and Sutul Shura. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah is an expression of love. There are many words to praise someone. There's madah. There's, there's thana. You know, um, there are many words that mean praise. But hamd is that praise that which you do out of love and out of appreciating the one you love for the quality that you're appreciating. That that, per that being has that quality that you're appreciating for. For example, you love someone because they're generous. So then that is hamd. And this is why Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's name is Muhammad. He is the, uh, the one who is he is the one who is praised. And what does Prophet Muhammad do? He says, Alam akun, alam aku abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the expression of love. Gratitude, gratitude. When a husband feels that my wife has done so much for, for me that no one else would have, or vice versa, this is the expression of love. Then he said, Thank you to her, or he says to her. Here, you're expressing, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All, pra all praise, but you know we usually say all praises for the Lord, right? You even have this translation here in this place, all praises for Allah. Okay, but hamd actually means shukr. It has the element of shukr more than praise. Shukr, gratitude out of love, muhabba is essential for hamd, and then, then out of that 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 sense of gratitude, you're praising them for the good qualities that they have. So alhamdulillah. 
All praises for Allah. Rabb Rab means the master, the caretaker, the guardian, the sustainer, the provider. You know, Rabb is your personal relationship with Allah. Okay? But Rabb also means master. The word Rabb is interesting, which uh, I'm not going to go into detail. But I do have a khutbah. I think I have two, three khutbahs on the word Rabb. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamd, all praise and gratitude and shukr is for Allah who is Rabbul Alam. He's the master of the universe. He's the one who takes care of the universe. Rabb, if it comes from Murabbi, then it means he's the caretaker and brings it from immaturity to maturity. Okay. Um, let's just continue. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, I already discussed. Maliki Yawmuddin. He is the master of the Yawmuddin. Deen means judgment. Deen means uh, moral law Deen means all these things Okay So Maliki Yawmiddin Then after that The central ayah here Iyaka ni'abud Only you we seek to become servants of Iyaka ni'abud And then Wa iyaka nista'in And only we seek your help We seek your help in all things And particularly to become your servants and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. What is it that you're asking? You're asking for the straight guidance. Why are you asking for the straight guidance? Because your life is the aggregate of the decisions that you make. And ihdaya is the ability to make the right decisions. So ihdina, oh Allah, guide us. As sirat al mustaqim to the straight path. Sirat al ladina namta alayhim. The path. Of those whom you have favored. Who are they? Mina Nabiyina wa Siddiqina wa Shuhada wa Salihin amongst the prophets that are mentioned in Quran. And Mina Nabiyin wa Siddiqin and the Siddiqin mentioned in Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet, the companions of the Prophet, wa Shuhada and those people that became the heroes of Islam by giving their sacrificing everything. Shuhada wa salihin in the righteous people, right? So, Sirat al ladina namta alayhim. Who are those? Those are the people that Allah has favored. Not those people who had the knowledge, meaning the distance between your knowledge and your action is the problem of your heart, is the disease of your heart. You have knowledge, you have to do something, but you're not able to do it. This is the disease of the heart, right? So, Fatiha becomes your motivation. This is your motivation that I should make the right decisions in life. For this world and the next world. Okay, so Sirat al Ladina Namta Alehim, Ghayr al Maldubi Alehim, not those who have earned your anger, Walla Dalin, nor those that are just lost. They don't know what's right, they don't know what's wrong, they're just lost. Anyhow, we all agree that at the end of Fatiha we have to say Ameen. Okay, so Ameen. أحمد وأصلي على الرسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا so today, inshallah ta'ala, we're starting, inshallah, by the permission of Allah, inshallah, we're starting the first juz in its translation. The very, I want this to be very fast-paced. So inshallah ta'ala, let me start by mentioning uh, something very, very basic here. And that is the first, so the Baqarah starts with the first five ayat being about the believers, okay? Then the next two verses after that are about, about the people who reject the truth. They are stubborn. And not only are they stubborn, Kufr in Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Or when Quran says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Generally, when it's referring to the kuffar, quote-unquote, it doesn't mean kuffar in the sharia perspective. It means kuffar as people that have rejected the truth and now they have made going against Islam, their antagonism against Islam has become their job. So this should be clear. Then the third group that is in the... So in the beginning, the Quran starts with three groups. The believers, those who are bent upon disbelieving the truth and fighting against the truth. And number three, those people that are d double-faced. 
Now this includes two groups, which I'll explain when we get to that ayah, inshallah ta'ala. Then after that, there's a parable that explains these two second groups, those who reject the truth and those that are double-minded. Okay? So after having said this, let's inshallah get straight into it. Alif la meem. No one knows what these haruful muqatta'at they are called, what they mean, except by except Allah subhanahu wa taala. And according to one narration, Allah and His Messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa taala knows best. Thalikal kitab. This is the book. What would you? Thalikal kitab. This is the book. What? What do I mean by that? In Fatiha, you asked Allah for guidance. Here, you're saying this is the book. Allah is saying. Here, this is that book. You wanted guidance. You wanted the ni'mah of Allah. You want the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be away from Allah's anger. And you don't want to be just lost in wilderness of not knowing where to go. Well, here, this is the book. al-kitab. This is the book. Even though we translate this as this is the book, it says, it, the literal translation is that is the book. But that is being used to emphasize this. al-kitab. This is the book. La rayba fi in which there's no doubt. You know, every book in the world has some mistakes, but Quran has no doubt. And then Quran sent out a challenge, which we'll come to in a few verses. But raib is that type of doubt that can be checked, that can be measured, that can be, you can put it into a test. Okay, here's a book, make another book like this, right? There's also a prophecy here. kitab. The Quran was not in the form of a book. But this was now going to become in the form of a book. And so here we have an Islamic eschatology in this sense of the early times, you can say. So, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ These, this fihi can go both ways. So you can read the ayah, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Or you can read it, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا للمتقين. This is what the three dots on fihi mean. That it can be interlocked either that way or that way, both ways. So you can say, فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ In it is guidance for the people who have taqwa. So Qur'an is guidance for people who have taqwa. So if you want guidance from Qur'an, you have to have taqwa. Focus on taqwa and taqwa. So now, what are the qualities of the people who have taqwa? Number one, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who have iman, belief in the unseen. Those people who believe that there can be something more than what they can see. There can be something more than what I can see. There's something more than what I can hear. There's more to this life than just what is this material world, right? There's more to this. There's, there, ha, there is a reality beyond what per, our perceptions through telescope and microscope and all the other instruments. There is a reality beyond what all our perceptions and our, its tools can perceive. And this is the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is to understand that, you know, there is something more to this world of cause and effect and the world of sensation, the world of senses. I see, I hear, there's something more to it than that. Now, if there is an unseen world, and then if there is an unseen world and it's a real world, it actually exists, the angels actually exist, heaven actually exists, hell actually exists, Allah actually exists, then, وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ then they establish the prayers. Why? In order to establish a link with that unseen world. In order to establish a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then those people that are establishing a link with that unseen world, then, you know, they have to prepare themselves for that unseen world. So, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And out of what we have provided them, they now spend. They give away. Nafaqa is to give your time, your energy, your wealth, everything in a certain cause. They invest themselves completely and fully. So then Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ And those who believe in whatever was sent to you, O Prophet ﷺ, وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And whatever was sent before you. So the belief in the previous books is important for many reasons, and that will become clear as we go through these verses. For example, there are many things in the previous books that are not in Qur'an. One most basic point about that is the chronologi chronological order of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find the chron chronological orders of the Prophet in the previous books. You don't find that in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah of the Prophet Because Qur'an doesn't re reveal itself as a, in a historical chronological order. <clears throat> Those people who believe in whatever was sent to you. This includes Qur'an and Sunnah of the Prophet. And whatever was sent before you. 
And in the hereafter, they have yaqeen. They're absolutely certain that they have to face Allah one day. And it is the rehearsal of this event, this final event, this main event, you know, of facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we rehearse this in our prayers, which goes back to the ayah before, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ And those who believe in whatever has been sent to you and whatever was sent after you. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ After you, or sorry, before you. Whatever was sent before before you, meaning the books before you. وَبِالْآخِرَتِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ Over here is another uh, point, which is that there is a proof in this ayah that there is no other prophet. Because it mentions the Qur'an, وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ Whatever has been revealed to you. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And what was revealed before you. Okay, so that's before. And in the future, it doesn't mention anything, even though, as you know, every prophet came confirming that there's a prophet coming after. But instead, it just says, uh, Now there's just akhirah. This is it. This is the end. As you know, one of the signs of the Prophet coming وسلم, is the Prophet himself is a sign that me and the hour are like hatain, hatain. You know, these two, like two fingers together, the Prophet said. So, what are the other? Then, these are the people that are in guidance from their Lord. And these are the people that are truly successful. You have these qualities, then these qualities allow you to what? To act upon the rest of the guidance of Quran. Okay, these are the fundamentals, the essential prerequisites that if you have them, that if you really believe you're going to face Allah, then you have what it takes to change your character. Right, and then if you're willing, if you are not, so you're willing to share, and you and you love to pray, and you really believe in the Book of Allah, and whatever was given to the Prophet in terms of his Sunnah, and whatever was given before, if you have all this, these are the people who have guidance. They have practical guidance. They will know what to do. Okay, they will know where to go. Meaning the Book of Allah and the Prophet sallallahu and these are the people that are successful. So. These are the first five verses. And I said, six and seven, the next two verses are those that absolutely reject the faith. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina kafaru. Indeed, those people that did kufr. Kufr in what sense? They have rejected the truth. Kafara means to cover. Okay? Those people that covered the truth, they buried the truth in themselves. They saw it. They knew it. They covered the truth. And not only they did that, but then they what? They decided to go become antagonistic to Islam and to Quran. And to the Prophet وسلم, It's all the same to them. It's about them. They, if they know the truth, it's all the same. Whether you warn them, or you don't warn them, they will not believe. They're not going to believe. What is their state? Allah has put a seal over their hearts. And over their ears. And over their eyes is a covering. And for them is a really painful punishment. A big, big painful punishment. A great punishment, rather, is a better translation. Now, the next group of ayahs, which I believe is about eight ayahs, is about the double-faced hypocrites, you can say. But this is also referring to the rabbis. Because this surah is revealed in Medina, as you know. And so the rabbis there are there too. And so this is referring to the hypocrites of Medina, like Abdullah bin Sabah. And uh, the rabbis of Medina. And amongst people, there are those who say, We believe in Allah and the day of judgment. But in fact, they don't believe in the hereafter. And this is the problem of the character. The weakness of the character of the hypocrites, those people that claim to believe Islam but don't act upon Islam, is the lack of the belief in the day of judgment. This is why Quran pounds this idea of the day of judgment, day of judgment, day of judgment. وهم وبالآخرة we believe in Allah and 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 in the hereafter وما هم بمؤمنين but in fact they're not believers, right? And what over here what's missing is they don't believe in the prophet of the prophet. They would say to the prophet too we believe in Allah we believe in the day of judgment but they wouldn't accept the prophet. يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا they want to deceive Allah and those who believe وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم they don't deceive except themselves وما يشعرون but they don't perceive it. In their hearts is a disease. 
Allah will only increase this disease more. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ alim For them is a painful punishment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Because of the lie that they utter. What's the lie here in this case? The lie is they say they believe, but in fact, it's just an external veneer. But internally they don't believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us amongst them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people who Allah said, وَأُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Then Allah says, about these people, the hypocrites, you know, you can see this about uh, this this role of the hypocrites amongst many of the Muslim leaders right now, especially what's happening with the uh, the, the peace talks and the deal of the century and Israel and all of this. When it is said to them, don't cause corruption in the world. Oh, no, 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 no. We're just making things. We're bringing peace. We're doing Islah. We're trying to make things right. And in the process of saying we're making, in the slogans of we're making peace, we're making peace, you're causing all the chaos. And this is exactly what was happening at the time of the Prophet وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ When it is said to them, don't cause corruption in the world. قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ Why do we have to do jihad? Why do we have to fight these people? Why do we have to have, let's, let's negotiate. Let's, 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 let's negotiate something. Let's make peace. Right? And then that peace will bring nothing but unpeace. It'll bring uh, just problems and facade. Because it's not based upon justice and it's not based upon equity. And uh, it, peace for the sake of uh, deception. No, the reality is that they are, they are not peacemakers, they're facade makers. But they don't perceive what they, they see what they're doing as peacemaking, but in fact it's just creating more facade. Right? In the name of peace, peace talks, peace talks, how many people have been killed, for example, already? Right? Why don't you believe like the people that believe when it is said to them? Why don't you believe like the people that believe? Why don't you believe like Abu Bakr and Umar? People that gave everything to Islam. Oh, don't be that foolish. Don't give everything to Islam. You know, you have to have, be worldly wise too. Should we believe like the fools have believed? But no, they are the fools. They don't realize it, but they don't know it. And when they meet the believers, they say, we believe. When they meet their leaders, and when they meet the uh, rabbis, you could say, if it was the Jewish community in Medina, and they went back to the rabbi, you know, they say to the believers, yeah, we believe too, Muhammad, he seems to be on the right path, but then they go back to their rabbis. Or when they go back to their munafiq leaders, like the munafiq leaders we have today, same thing. This is exactly what happens with the munafiq leaders. And when they meet the believers in public, they say, oh, we believe. When they meet their shayateen, their leaders, when they meet their leaders, and when they are alone with their shayateen, their leaders, we are with you. We're just making fun of them. We're just mocking them. Allah is the one who's mocking them, but Allah has let them go. Allah has, uh, has given them an extension in which they can wander blindly now. Okay, They're just wandering blindly. Here's a very beautiful simile for what or similitude of what they have, or a metaphor. These are the people that have purchased air for guidance. They bought air. So there are those people that are fully believers, those people that are fully, they're going to go against Islam, and the people that are in the middle, right? And the biggest problem and the is, is, is this group that's in the middle, right? They ruin everything for the believers, you can say. Those people that are claiming to be with the believers, but in fact they're not with the believers. These are the people who purchased error for guidance. So their bargain, their trade is not profitable. And these people are not guided. These people are not guided. Now here, over here I want to mention that this is ayahs number 17 to 20. Okay, parable of the two mindsets. What's the inter what is internally happening? 
So there's a parable that's going to explain what is internally happening. مَثَلَهُمْ كَمَثَلِ لَزِسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا مَثَلَهُمْ كَمَثَلِ لَزِسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا Their example is, here, just imagine this. Imagine there is a darkness. Everywhere it's dark. And somebody turns on a, a candle. And now there's light. And everyone can see. But here's the problem. They were able to see now, but now their eyesight's been taken. They can't see now again. The person who comes and kindles the fire, who lights the fire, for everyone to see is Prophet Muhammad But because they of their self-interests, they're, they're wanting to be with the status quo, because they wanted the wealth and the zina and the uh, the 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 you know the, the the illusion of the world they bought into it because of that now the eyesight has been taken away from them. Mathalahu this is very close to what in uh, philosophy has been considered the the uh, the parable of the uh, cave, the Plato's parable of the cave. If you ever looked that up, Mathalahum kamathalilazistaqadanara. Their example is like the one who kindles a fire. Now when that light is everywhere, everyone can see everything. But now Allah took away their eyesight. And left them in the many darknesses. And they can't see now. So this is how it is. This is the point of no return. They're deaf, they're dumb, they're blind, right? فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجُونَ And they can't return. This is the point of no return. You've gone to the other side. Now that's it. Everything is sealed for you. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ As it was mentioned earlier. Or another example of these people is أَوْ كَصَيِّبٍ مِنَ الصَّمَاءِ فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعْضٌ وَبَرْقٌ Or like a rain from the sky in which there's many darknesses and ra'ad and there's thunderstorm and barq and lightning. And out of the fear, right? They put their fingers in their ears. It's dark. Okay. They put their fingers in their ears out of the fear of the shout and out of the fear of death. Wallahu muhitum bil kafirin. And Allah has fully encircled from every angle, Allah has fully encircled, meaning Allah is in full control of those who have disbelieved. This third example here is now of the munafiqeen, the double minded people. It is as if the barq, the lightning, will come and take away their eyesight. Every, every time there's lightning, they see the lightning. That light, this, uh, this rain is actually wahi, revelation. It's the, it's the baraka of Allah coming down. But they perceive that as, as something very scary. And so when they see light, you know, something easy to do, oh, you know, give charity to this person, it's very easy, but go, go and give everything for the sake of Allah, give all your money for the sake of Allah, to go and struggle for Islam, to do jihad, this is very hard, so this become, this is, this made them, you know, very scared about what would be, what would Muhammad say tomorrow? For example, then when it be dark, then they're standing still again. They're st they're, it's like they're in darkness. And then they see, they, even the light that they see, they see as lightning rather than as, as, as nur, as, as guidance, right? If Allah wanted these munafiks, the veneer of Islam, because there's two types of munafiks also I want to mention. The munafiq mentioned in Qur'an mostly is the people who say they believe, but inside they have absolutely no iman. The munafiq, the signs of the munafiq that are three, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَّبَ When he talks, he lies, for example. Uh, that is the signs of a munafiq that is somebody who has belief, but he is getting closer to that, by character, he's getting closer to that, that munafiq mentioned in Qur'an. So there's the, and this is one of the interesting topics, the symbiotic relationship Quran and Sunnah have with one another. And one of them is, one of the points about that is the munafiq. The munafiq Quran talks about and the munafiq the hadith point to are, uh, have a link with each other, but they're of different types. So one is munafiq asli, yani he, is, he really is two-faced. He says he believes, but actually doesn't believe at all. And then there are those people that they believe, but they then have difficult time surrendering and in that way they because they have a difficult time surrendering and they become munafiq okay 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being a munafiq. Yakadul barku yakhtafu absarahum. So when they see the thunderstorm, they think that it's going to snatch away their eyesight because they see the commandments. You know, the, th the lightning is like a commandment, okay? It, or it is like nur for the believer, okay? Kullama adha lahum mashawfi. When they see the light, they walk therein. Wa idha adlama alayhim qamu. And when it becomes dark for them again, they stand still. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah surely would have taken away their hearing and even their, even whatever they could see of the guidance that they see in this scary form, Allah would have even taken away that. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ Indeed, Allah has the power to do all things. Now this ayah is very important because after mentioning these three types of groups, the believers, those that are not going to believe no matter what, and the munafits, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the parable of how their example is. Now here is the call of Quran. So this is the call of Quran. Ya yuhannas, O mankind. So the call of Quran is for all mankind. Who is going to benefit from it? Hudallil muttaqin. Guidance for the people that have taqwa. Ya yuhannas, O mankind. Urbudu rabbakum. Become servants or slaves of your Rabb, your creator. Alladhi khalaqakum. Who created you? وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will have taqwa, God consciousness, understanding of God, realization of God. And this is, you know, Allah is saying, look, I, this is, you know, imagine you meet your, belief, your, your creator and he says, I'm the one who created you, right? I'm the one who created you. I'm the one that's going to tell you where to go, right? So this is what's being done. And then Allah says, look, I provided for you. I created you. And then I provided for you. And he is the one who made the earth for you like a, you can say, a resting place, a floor. Okay? Firasha. Like a floor, you can say. He made the earth a resting place for you. And bina means like a building or like some structure. And he made the sky a structure for you. Like we know the ozan layer, the way it protects us, this will come in another place Quran more clearly. And he sent down from the sky water. So from it came out many fruits. As a providence for you. So don't make any partners to Allah. While you're fully aware of this. That Allah did this for you. Now, next is the, the, the call of Quran. And then now here, the challenge of Qur'an. Ayah number 23, I believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِ Look, if you are really in doubt, if you are sincere about your doubt, doubt, then go ahead. If you are sincere about our doubt about what we... بِمَا... Uh, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا Over what we have sent down to our servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْنِ Then come with a surah like this. وَدْعُوا شُحَدَاءَكُمْ Come on, bring all your helpers. مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Other than Allah. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you're really sincere and you really believe this is not the word of Allah, then you Arabs, then you should be able to get together with all your poets and all your philosophers and all your, you know, the big poets that they had, the sabba mu'allaqat and, and the, everyone they could bring together to, to basically shut Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up to, for lack of a better word. They bring something better than Qur'an, that's all that what it's going to take. And say, here's something better than Qur'an. But of course that never happened. It could have never happened, especially for anybody who studies Jahiliya poetry. And then you just listen to a little bit of Jahiliya poetry and then you listen to Quran, it becomes very, very clear. Right? وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِ If you are in doubt about what we've sent upon our servant, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِ Then come with something like this Quran. وَذْعُوا شُهَدَاكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you're truthful, then bring your witnesses and your helpers. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْأَلُوا And you can never do this. If you can't do this, وَلَنْ تَفْأَلُوا And you can never do this. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارُ Then now fear the fire. Because now you're just being stubborn. Now, now you're not accepting and surrendering to the truth out of your arrogance and your status quo and your self-interest then fear the fire whose fuel will be men and stone this is prepared for those people who reject the truth knowing it's the truth and are stubborn in accepting the truth and too proud to accept the truth 
Now the contrast, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ um, Those who accept this call, those that give in, those that surrender, who totally surrender, اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And give good tidings to those who believe and do good deeds. أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ For them is rivers under which there is rivers that flow. كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا Every time they eat from risk from the Jannah, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ رِزْقَ They eat from the, th the fruits of risk from it. قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ This is what we ate before. One, exa one, I one meaning of this is, this is what we ate before, is that the fruits there will be similar to the fruits on earth. There will be some similarity, but even though the taste will be of a different quantitative level, but there will be some similarity. The other meaning is, هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ The good feeling you had, for example, when you the smile the Prophet talks about when you, the person that is happy after breaking fast. The good deeds you did, you, the subhanAllah as you said, the good feelings you had when you did good deeds, that you'll be feeling that, but at, 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 at a more powerful level. Allahu A'lam. كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ رِزْقَ قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ they say, This is what we used to experience before. This is what we used to give, being given as rizq. Meaning Iman is also part of your risk. And then risk is risk as providence, food and sustenance is also risk. This is the risk we had before. And then there were other things like it that won't be like the fruits that we knew on earth, but other types of fruits. And for them will be wives that are pure. In it they will remain forever and ever. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Allah la yastahi. Now, you know, people objected. They couldn't meet the challenge of the Qur'an, but they were still making objections. Why is Qur'an doing this? So one of them was, why Qur'an gives these examples? Why is Qur'an giving this example or that example? So over here Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحْيِي Allah is not shy. أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا مَا بَعُودَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا That he gives you an example of a mosquito or something even less than that is one meaning. Another interesting meaning of this is, أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا That Allah gives you an example of what is like a mosquito or even what is over it what is on top of it what is on top of the mosquito is the bacteria on the wings okay so both are correct as for those who believe they know this is the truth from their Rabb as for those people who deny the truth what does Allah mean by these examples? Why is Allah giving us the, the, that's God, why is he, but this is all his creation. He can give the example of anything from his creation. The important thing is that the example that he's giving, that the two correspond, the example that he's giving and what he's talking about, the two correspond to each other. This is the important thing. What does Allah mean by these? So, uh, Allah leads astray many by this Qur'an. And Allah guides many to this Qur'an. This Qur'an is furqan. It'll, those people that have bad intentions, they'll go away. Those people that have good intentions and dive into Qur'an, they'll see the truth. May Allah make us of those people that guided, get guided by this Qur'an. And you... They don't get, uh, they, they, none gets astray from this Qur'an except for the evildoers, okay? Who are those? Those people who break the covenant of Allah after rectifying it, after saying yes. And those who break the commandment of Allah. Uh, that things that need to be joined together, like husband and wife need to be joined together, put together, islah and islah between people, making things good between people. وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And they cause corruption in the world. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ They're the real losers. And you'll find this word خُسْرَان and خَاسِرُونَ over and over again, especially in this uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Now this ayah is very important. This ayah is talking about our the beginning of our spiritual creation. And then right after this will be the beginning of our physical creation. Over here I want to make this point clear. Allah created our arwah, our ruh, the one that is put into our, into the fetus of the mother after uh, 40 days, 40 days, 40 days. Okay, 
the prophet said, after 120 days, or he didn't say 120 days, he said 40, 40, 40. Then after that, the feet, the womb, in the womb, the ruh is the, you could say the ruh, the special aspect of man. Because when the angels were asked to bow down to Adam, according to the Quran, فَإِذَا نَفَخْتُ فِيهِمْ الرُّوحِ When I blow in him the ruh, Allah said, now you go back and go down into sujood. At that moment where the ruh enters the human being, now you bow down to Adam. So now, this is referring to that. Because Surah Al-A'raf was already revealed, because that was a Makki surah, this is a Madani surah. Okay? And Surah Al-A'raf says, Oh Allah, why, you gave us death two times. And you gave you gave us life twice. And you gave us death twice. So what are these two deaths and two lives? So over there, Allah gave you life in Alimul Arwah, your ruh. Then Allah put that to sleep. Okay? Then Allah gave you life here in the womb of the mother. Then Allah, Allah will give you death. So these are the two lives and the two deaths. And then you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah is referring to. The inside, and when you were there in Alimul Arwah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone was there. All the human beings were there. And Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? Qalu bala. Yes. We all said, this is why it's in our fitrah. It's in our human nature to believe in God, to want God, to connect to God. Right? No matter what culture you look at, every single human culture has tried to connect with the divine and with God. Okay? How do you deny in Allah? When you were dead, then He gave you life. You were over there, you were dead, then He gave you life. After some time. The thumma and thumma is important because this tells you the time factor. Thumma yumitukum. Then he gave you death. Thumma yuhikum, the life we have in this world. Thumma ilayhi turja'oon. And then you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is regarding the ruh. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. This body will go back to earth. But inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Thumma ilayhi raji'oon. That is the ruh going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Now, but because there was a purpose of divine creation, which over here I will also mention, right? So there was the call of Qur'an from ayah number 21 to 29, which we went through. Now, there is the divine plan of creation, so we're now going to look at that, inshallah ta'ala. This is ayah number 29. Look, Allah is the one, you know how in the beginning, O oh mankind, Worship your Lord who created you. Where I mentioned that, you know, Allah said, I created you, right? How great to meet you. I created you. I'm the one who created you. And now this is the second. And now I'm the one who made everything for you. All this is yours. This is created for you. So, It is Allah who, He is the one who created for you. Whatever is on earth is, all of it is for you. And really, man, human beings experiences everything that we find. Everything we're, we're even, everything, everything that comes out of the earth, the iron, the ore, the minerals, the copper, everything, the, the, all the medicine that comes out of the plant, everything is for what? It's for us, for human beings. All at service of human beings. All uh, at the service of humans becoming civilization. Whatever he created is for you. And then after he created the earth for you, then he went to the earth and put it into seven different parts. This also could mean he created the earth for you, and then within this earth he created the seven layers of the atmosphere, in this specific case. And he has the knowledge of absolutely everything. Now here, the divine plan. Very, very interesting. Now imagine Allah has created angels. They're doing tasbih of Allah, tahmeed of Allah, tahleel of Allah. They're praising Allah, praying to Allah. Right? Now Allah says to the angels, in, And remember, when your Rabb said to the Malaika, He said to the angels, Look, I'm going to create on the earth a Khalifa, my, my Viceroy. Now what is a Khalifa? Khalifa is, for example, there's a king and there is, let's say, another land. So I'll give you an example, historical example. Let's say Britain. Britain has a queen. And India is under the colony of, is now a colony of the British government. 
Okay, this happened in, you know, 100 years or so, 150 years from now. So India, the queen, she is in charge. Uh, she, she sends a person, a viceroy, a man or a person to be in control of India, right? So now he can, he has to implement the laws of the queen there. But in wherever the queen is silent, the queen doesn't say anything. He can do whatever he needs to to run and manage the affairs of the of the land that is part of the monarchy. This is Khalifa. Khalif means Naib in Arabic is another meaning, right? The word Khalifa has other meanings, but I'm not going to go into that right now. And remember when your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place on earth a Khalifa. Now the angels, you know, for several reasons, they said, قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا Are you going to place on earth someone who's going to cause fasad? And they were right. If you look at history, history is just summed up with one power came and they fought the other power and the other power came and then they wrestled those people and the other power came and then the other power came and then they, they that civilization removed that other civilization and they fought against the other civilization. And this is the history of men. They were right. Are you going to place on earth those that will cause fasad? So one uh, thing that some of the Mufassirin say about this is, of course, the jinns were already on earth. And because they were already on earth, they were already causing fasad. And because they were already ca causing fasad, so they, based upon that that experience, they were asking based upon that. And will shed blood. And over here, the other thing is perhaps the angels were thinking that they should have been in the place of the Khalifa. Because why? Look, well, Allah, we are the ones, we're always praising you, we're always glorifying you, we're always thanking you. And declaring your holiness. Allah said, I know that which you don't know. I know fully well of, of the things that you don't know. Now, so there, these are now going to be the two aspects of man. Man has a divine spark within him, the ruh. Then he has the physical body, right? And when these two connected, the angels were asked to bow down. This will become more clear in other parts of the Quran. But now over here, there are two parts of his knowledge. The first part of his knowledge is himself. Trial and error, his experience. You know, these three subjects, you know, to make it easy. Biology, physics, and chemistry. Man can go on and on and on. He doesn't need guidance for this. He just needs his brain and in biology and physics and chemistry. And these three come to make what? Technology. That's why we say biotech, for example. So in, in these subjects, you know, like look at the beauty of the, uh, of the periodical table in chemistry. Right? Who did that? Man did that. Subhanallah. Allah gave that type of mind. So in the subjects of biology, in the subjects of chemistry, in the subjects of physics, man can just go on and on on increasing his knowledge. But where does he, man need guidance? Man needs guidance in psychology, in sociology, in anthropology, in political science, in economics, right? In, in philosophy, how to see the world, how to understand the world. So those subjects that need hadaya are this, what we call the social sciences and humanities. So over here, I just want to mention this. So the guidance that comes to mankind is according to the level of where man is in his development in the social sciences. So if man was in the cave, for example, the rules and laws will be different from Allah. The economics will be different. The social system will be different. Now when it becomes tribal society versus multi-tribal society, you know, when there's tribal society, you had the, what, the, the Ten Commandments, for example, right? Musa is one big family, Bani Israel. Then after that, it's multi-families, which you had, for example, in in Mecca, you had mostly one family, Medina, uh, one tribe. In Medina, for example, you had multi, multi tribes. So then you have empires and states. So according, as man was increasing in his social structure, okay, then man needed guidance in these different fields, in economics, in sociology, in, in, in psychology, and so on and so forth. So now with this in mind, we read this. And we taught Adam the name of all things. And then we presented them to the angels. Certain things Allah presented them to the angels. Tell me the name of these things. In kuntum sadiqin, if you're truthful. Now, what does man do? Man is built to learn. 
We taught man the name of all things. Potentially, whenever man sees anything, what does he do? He names it. So in that sense, Allah has taught man the name of all things. Okay. subhanak. They said, Allah, subhanAllah, Allah, you're perfect. We have no knowledge except what you taught us. Indeed, you are the one who is all knowledgeable and all wise. You know, we, we can't. We. Then Allah says to Adam, Qala ya Adam. Allah says, Oh Adam, Ambi'ahum bi asmahim. Go ahead, tell them the name of these things, the things that Allah had presented before the angels. Falamma amba'ahum, when, when Adam immediately named them all, right? Bi asmahim, he gave them all a name, okay? Qala alam. And over here, the proof is coming that he didn't learn the name of all things, which will come here in a second. Qala alam aqul lakum, did I not tell you? I know the hidden things of the heavens and the earth. Then Allah says, I know that which you were declaring, and I knew that I know that which you were hiding. What was inside you? The wise man, we should be in this place. You know, we are the one in obedience to Allah. This man will, you know, do the same thing that the jinns do. This was one opinion that according to the Mufassirin. And remember when we said to the angels, bow down to Adam, فسجدوا, they all bowed illa Iblis, except for Iblis. Aba was takbar, why he refused? Aba, refusing to the highest degree. Was takbar, and he was so proud. And he was definitely of the disbelievers. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ And we said, O oh Adam, you and your wife live in Jannah. وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شَعْتُمَا And both of you live in Jannah, right? And eat from Jannah. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Adam and Hawa in Jannah to eat? Because the best way to bring two people together, especially spouses together, it's very important that spouses eat together, families eat together. It's not just a biological phenomenon. It is a bonding process. This is why big businesses, what do they do? They call it whining and dining. Why? Because when you eat, your defense mechanisms break. And when the father sits in his chair, and the mother sits in his chair, and the ch children are sitting in their chair, you're, you are re reinforcing the family structure that you have. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِعْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِي شَجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And we said, O oh Adam, you and your wife live in this Jannah and eat from this Jannah. Right? Where, whatever you wish. But don't go near this tree. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ you will be of the wrongdoers. Now, one possibility is Allah said, don't go near this tree. And Allah pointed to that tree that he didn't want him to go to. The other possibility is, for example, I point to a cherry tree, a certain genesis, a certain type of tree. I point to a certain type of tree. And Allah says, don't go to this tree, meaning this type of tree. But Adam went to a that type of tree, but not that tree. Meaning if I point to one, let's say, cherry tree or an apple tree, I'd say to an apple tree, don't go near this tree. Meaning any of the other trees that are like this tree of the same type, don't go to them. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he went to, one possibility is he went to that exact tree or another tree of that tri type of tree. Ash-shajara. Shajara, ash-shajara. So it could be Genesis or it could be a specific tree. وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Don't go near this tree. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ You will be of the wrongdoers. فَأَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ So shaytan caused them to slip. فَأَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَ فِي So they came out of the state that they were in. فَقُلْ نِحْبِطُوا بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ عَدُوا Now go from here. بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ عَدُوا You are now enemies of one another. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرْ For you in earth is a, is a period of, of istikrar, of, of stability. وَمَتَاءٌ إِلَاهِينَ And benefits to a certain time. This earth is going to last until the point it can sustain human beings. Then it will be unsustainable. Top soil will end. Oil and these things will come to, eventually come to an end. And the other benefits that we're bringing out of the earth, you know, eventually... The earth will not be able to sustain human beings, so the day of judgment has to come anyhow. So Mata'un Ilahin is pointing to that. Fatalaqa now remember over there it said, Wa'allama Adam al Asma Akullaha. We taught Adam the name of all things. Over here now, Fatalaqa Adam Mirabihi Kalimatin, and we taught Adam the Kalimatin Fataba Ali. Fatalaqa Allah Allah gave to or taught Adam or met Adam is literally the meaning, or he received Allah Adam received from Allah, got from Allah. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ Allah taught Adam how to, because Adam asked, 
He wanted to do tawbah. So Allah taught him the words, this is how you do tawbah. فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ So Allah forgave him. إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah is at tawwab and He is a rahim وَقُلْ نِحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا Now go down, all of you from here. Meaning, the shaitan, Adam and Hawa. Now, what will happen? Over there, by the way, I wanted to mention, from the very beginning it mentions the, uh, the, you can say, uh, the, the, the war between Haq and Batil. Okay? قُلْ نِحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا Right over, over here. يَحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا Go down your enemies of one another. So your enemies of one another, enemies of truth and falsehood. Now that's going to begin. This becomes more clear over here. Again, go down. Over there, remember, the angels, they said, what? He will cause fasad. Over here is, but if they follow my guidance, what will happen? Go down all of you now. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا Now, if comes to you from me, guidance, hudan. Now, whenever Qur'an talks about previous revelations, it's hudan with al, al instead of al-huda, which comes from Qur'an. قُلْ نِحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِيَ هُدَايَ Whoever follows this guidance, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Then there will be no fear upon them and nor any sadness. Meaning no fasad. But the condition is, follow what has been given. To you from me because there are certain matters human beings cannot do justice in. they cannot decide they don't know where to go certain technical things technical knowledge how to fix computers technology physics math mathematics uh, chemistry these things man can do but when it comes to himself and society and psychology and sociology and and anthropology and political science man is lost he makes a lot of mistakes so man needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah created us. He knows our nature and we don't know our nature. Those people who denied and made a lie of our signs, they are the people of the hellfire. In it, they will remain. So now this is the plan, the divine plan. Now you're going down, you're going to be enemies. But if my guidance comes, la خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ now after this is now the beginning of the discussion of with the Prophet and the Rabbis and the discussion about Bani Israel. Over here let me show you very quickly. So Ayahs 30 to 39, the divine plan for creation. Now 40 to 46 will be Islam and the Rabbis. Because th this surah is Madni and when the Prophet went to Medina, the Rabbis were there, the Jewish community was there looking at the Prophet ﷺ. So now the dialogue with them and Bani Israel will begin with this point in mind that this will now go towards what? Why? Uh, so we will discuss this inshallah. Um, I'm going to uh, come right back and inshallah discuss this. One thing I want to point out inshallah ta'ala. Uh, uh, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk to about Islam or the Prophet and the Rabbis. Because the Prophet had gone into Medina and because the Prophet sallam, was now in Medina and the, the Jewish community was there is a new community in a sense that, that Islam is now going to be interacting with. It's a very interesting situation because the Muslim, after building the masjid, the Prophet sallam, said, to build the marketplace and then the, the people in Medina they built the marketplace because the Prophet ﷺ set a special place of marketplace for the Muslims and the Jewish people used to have their own marketplace. The reason I'm mentioning this is to only make the point that there was now an interaction with the Jewish community. These were the people that were the custodians of the books of Allah These are the people that were getting the prophets of Allah So now a direct conversation with these people who had the previous scriptures because M M Mecca they were idol worshippers right and one of the beautiful things about the Quran by the way is that the Quran you know talks to everyone it talks to the pagans it talks to the Christians it talks to the Jews it talks to the Dahriyin the, the atheists the agnostics you know it talks to everyone and that's one of the beautiful things the Quran has such a strong discourse and such a strong dialogue but anyhow one thing that I wanted to share with you um, that I forgot to mention, which is very interesting. You know the verse of the Quran, 
<coughs> where the angels say, "Atajalu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima'a." Oh Allah subhanahu wa taala, are you going to place someone in there that's going to cause bloodshed and 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 kill people? Atajalu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima'a. Shed blood and cause chaos, right? There is a professor. Uh, his name is Jeffrey Lang. And he wrote a book, Even the Angels Asked. And he's referring to this part of the Qur'an. Very interesting book. Which is, that as an atheist, he was a, he's a professor, Jeffrey Lang's a professor of mathematics. And as a, as, you know, as a professor, he was an atheist. Okay? And the basic question that he had in his mind is, you know, human, if there's God, why is there bloodshed? Right? And now here the angels are asking the same question he had. Right? Are you going to place in the world in the world someone who's going to cause chaos and shed blood, right? And so, a lot of people are not don't believe in God because when they look at the chaos in the world, they forget to see the beauty in the world. It's like going to the hospital and asking, "Why is everyone dying here?" But you forget that the purpose of the hospital <coughs> is not that everyone dies there. <coughs> But rather, the purpose of the hospital is to cure the people. Anyway, let us go back to our topic where we are now, which is the discussion of the Prophet of the Quran and the dialogue of the Quran with the uh, Bani Israel. So this is ayah number forty now. So بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي نمت عليكم وأوفوا بأهدي أوفي بأهدكم وإياي يا فرحبون أو بني إسرائيل meaning the children of Yaqub بني إسرائيل is Yaqub بني إسرائيل children of Yaqub اذكروا نعمتي remember my favor upon you التي نمت عليكم that I bestowed upon you أوفوا بأهدي أوفي بأهدكم fulfill my promise I'll fulfill uh, fulfill your end of the promise, I'll fulfill my end of the promise. And only fear me. Because why? A lot of the rabbis, you know, they had their interests. They were fearing what will the people say about them. They will be called cowards. They will be made fun of. So if these rabbis in Medina, they came out. Why were they in Medina in the first place? They were there because they believed that a prophet would come there. So now, Ya Bani Israel, uthkuru ni'mati allati namtu alaykum. O oh, Bani Israel, remember the ni'am of Allah that I bestowed upon you. Awfu bi ahdi, ufi bi ahdikum. Fulfill your promise and I'll fulfill my promise. Wa iya ya Only fear me. Don't look at other people and accept the truth. Don't be arrogant regarding the truth. You better have real fear of me. Wa aminu bima anzaltum musaddiqan lima ma'akum. And believe in what we have sent down. Musad, confirming that which was with you. Meaning what? That the Tawrat the books that you have, they have the information of the Prophet ﷺ confirming that which is already with you. And don't be the first ones to reject this. You, the people of, that are in Medina of all the people, right, should know that a Prophet was coming here and you have these signs of him in his in, in your books which will come, they know him like they know their own sons. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Look, don't sell my ayat, my signs, my verses, my book, my teachings that has come to you in the form of your previous books. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا For a small price. Meaning, for this world, for the next world. وَإِيَّا فَاتَّقُونَ And only fear me. وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ and don't cover the truth with falsehood. وَتَقْتُمُ الْحَقِّ nor, And hide the truth. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ While you're fully aware of it. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ And establish the prayer and give zakat. And what? وَرْكَعُوا مَا الرَّاكِعِينَ And bow down with those who bow down. You know, in the Jewish prayer, they have the qiyam, and they have the sujood, but they don't have the ruku'. So over here is what and bow down with those who bow down. Meaning what? Surrender, 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 right? And it's not easy, it's very hard, and Allah will mention this. Now Allah is saying to them, Do you enjoin people to do good deeds? anfusakum while you forget your own selves? kitab and you're reading the book of Allah. Afala ta'qilun, do you have no brains? Wastainu bis sabri Look. You have to get help with sabr, because in Allah sabirin. Allah is with those who have sabr. Wasta'inu bi sabri was salah and salah. Salah to connect to Allah and sabr to connect to Allah. It's a very difficult thing. 
standing up to your community as a rabbi and saying, this Muhammad is the truth and letting go your seat. Now you have to follow Muhammad. Others are following you. Now you'll be following Muhammad So inna kabira. This is very difficult. Illa ala al-khashi'een. Except for the people that have khushu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, you know, there's a dua. Allahumma inni as'alu khashiyataka ma tahulu bayni wa bayna ma'asiyataka. Oh Allah, I ask you for khashiyah, your fear. Khashiyah, by the way, is different from khawf. Khawf is a negative fear. Khashiyah is a positive fear. It's an awe. It's a pot, like somebody, you res the fear of someone you respect. Okay. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And how will that happen? الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ Those people who were firm in the belief أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ That they will meet their Rabb. وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And that they're going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned before, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Same thing here. Again, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ O Bani Israel, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ And remember my favor upon you. وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ I have favored you of all mankind. Even today, even though the spiritual uh, element has been taken away, their spiritual status has been taken away. But they have the fadila, even in the world today. All the noble prizes, all the big, uh, you know, uh, the movers and shakers in, in politics, in, in the academia, and so on and so forth. So many, majority of them are from which background? They're from the, the background of Bani Israel, from the Jewish background. I gave you fadila over all mankind. But that with that now fadila is something else which we will discuss later. Fear that day. Where no soul will help another soul. There's no escape that day. No help that day. Nor there will be anyone to intercede on, on your behalf. Nor will any ransom be taken. And there will be no, no help from you for, for you for any quarter. You and your good deeds and you and your bad deeds. And that is it. That's it. Now over here starts what we can call a charge sheet. Charge sheet is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Bani Israel, I did this for you, but you did this. And I did this for you, and you still did this. And I did this for you, and you still did this. Therefore, now that spiritual status has to change. And now that will happen right in the middle of Surah Al-Baqarah with the change of the Qibla. So the Qibla is going to change. That means now the, the Qibla is towards Jerusalem. Okay, And now the Qibla is going to change towards Mecca. As a symbolic gesture of now the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, is completely independent and is a entity in itself. And the previous Ummah, meaning the Bani Israel, the Ummah before us, uh, they have now been replaced. Over here I want to mention something very important. The Prophet said وسلم, Now this is not just about Bani Israel. Why? Because the Prophet said you will certainly do what? What, uh, you will follow the people, the sunnah of the people before you, right? You will follow the patterns and the behaviors of the people before you. Before you meaning who? The Bani Israel. And majority of the early Christians and majority of the early, of course, the Jews, they were all part of Bani Israel. And the early Christians were also Bani Israel. And this is the hadith in Sahih Bukhari. You will definitely follow the sunnahs of the people before you. And if one of them went into a lizard's hole, you will go into a lizard's hole. And you will follow them hand span by hand span. And so, and a companion of the Prophet asked, Is this, are you referring to the Jews and the Christians? He said, who else? And the Prophet said, Hadith in Sahih Bukhari. So, our attitudes are the same as the Jewish attitudes. We're no different from the Jews in so many ways, as you will see as we go through these verses. But over here, what is being discussed is the charge sheet. But this same charge sheet fits on us in many ways. We Allah has given us so many things. Allah gave us, you know, the, the instead of manna and salwa, Allah gave us the oil. But what did we do? We made it a fitna. So like this, you can see. And when we save you from the people of Fir'aun, when you were trapped in a great punishment, they killed your men, and they let your women go to use them as slaves, Right, gave the freedom to the women, 
give the freedom to the Muslim woman and kill the man. Kill the man. And in this was a great test from your Lord. Okay. <clears throat> and remember when we parted the seas. And we, we delivered you. And we uh, drowned the people of Fir'aun. And you were watching this as this was happening. So now. And remember that time where we promised Musa alayhi salam, we took Musa alayhi salatu wasalam for 40 nights. And, and during that time while he was there for 40 nights getting the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you took the calf for worship. Min ba'adihi wa antum zalimun, and you were wrongdoers. Okay. Thumma afawna ankum min ba'di dhalik. Then after that we still forgave you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that perhaps you will give shukr to Allah. You will give thanks to Allah. وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ And remember, we gave Musa, still we gave Musa the book and the criterion of right and wrong. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ So you will be guided. <coughs> and look at this event. When Musa a.s. came back from the mountain of getting the book, uh, when he had the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Ten Commandments, when he came back, they had the calf. Now he had to purge the society, fix the society. And over here, you know, there was a rebellion against the, the, the Musa والسلام, who was the leader. And this is the example of the Murtad, you can say in Islam. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ And remember when Musa والسلام, said to his people, يَا قَوْمِ O oh my people, إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّقَاذِكُمُ الْإِجْلَةِ You've done a lot of wrong to yourselves by taking this cap for worship. فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَعْلِكُمْ So you, now you have to do tawbah to the one who created you. So kill yourselves. This is the literal meaning. The meaning of this can't be understood unless you also have some knowledge of the previous books. Which is 3,000 men, and I can show that to you in Exodus here, 3,000 of the people of Musa والسلام, were killed that day by, and how was that done? So whoever were the tribal leaders, so you had 12 tribes, so each tribal leader made sure that the people of their tribe the people of their tribe that had committed shirk and worshipped the calf, that each of the tribes killed their own members of that tribe that had did this shirk. So, فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Kill yourself. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ This is best for you, meaning for your tawbah, for you. In the بَارِئِكُمْ With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ He will forgive you. إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, he is التَّوَّابُ He is a rahim So, such a harsh punishment was given so that never again Never again they will do this because Musa والسلام, was there for 40 nights and they began to worry after 20 days or so. You know, our leader is gone, nowhere to be seen. Who knows where he is, even if he's coming back. So they took this calf for worship, you know, and, 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 and they did this because Samari, the magician, he convinced the people that, look, Moses is coming back or not, we don't know, but we better have a God for ourselves out here. Astaghfirullah. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى And then when Musa والسلام, went to the mountains, he took some of the elders. Now, over there they also gave him problems, the elders, before he came down. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَاءَ اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً They said, O Musa والسلام, we will never believe in you until we see Allah plainly with our, our eyes. Jahra. فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّائِقَةً So then what happened? You know, a thunderbolt came and took you. A shout, a shriek, a thunderbolt came and took you. وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْذُرُونَ And you watched this as this happened. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ Then we gave you life after your death. And this is a theme that's here in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Baqarah specifically, how Allah gives life to the dead. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ That how Allah miraculously gives life to the dead. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ Then we gave you life after death. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that maybe you will give some shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّةَ وَالسَّلْوَى Even after the people of Bani Israel said that when Musa said, okay, go into that city, okay, and just you do uh, fight with me, just enter into that city, you will be caught. They said, no, 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 no. They are strong people. We cannot fight against them. We're not going to end. You and your, you did all these miracles for us, and now you and your Rabb go and fight for us. Go over there yourselves. We're not going into these big cities. Even after that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them manna and salwa 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them clouds as shades. While they were yutihuna fil ardi arba'ina salla, while they were in this, you can say, state of punishment in the desert, traveling in the desert, all over the desert. Well, so, and this was, they were in the desert, trapped in the desert because of this disobedience to Musa alayhi salatu for 300 years. وَظَلَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَةِ And we put, we gave you the shade of the clouds. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّةِ وَالسَّلْوَةِ Manna was like a dew that used to come in the morning, you know, like you have a dew. Like, and that would, you could say, we used to get the carbohydrates and vitamins from that. And then the protein from salwa. Salwa was like a quail type of bird. Kulu min marzaknakum. Eat of the pure things that we've given you. This is why Muslims should also consider eating organic food. And eating food that is not, uh, you know, genetically manipulated. Tayyibat, pure, wholesome. كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ We did not wrong, our, we did not wrong, we were not the ones who did wrong, but they are the ones who wronged themselves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قُلْ And then, when they entered into the city of Jericho, okay? وَإِذْ قُلْ نَدْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةِ And then we said, go ahead, enter into this city. فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِعْتُمْ رَغَدًا Go and eat from this city as much as you like. وَدُخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا And enter into this city with sujood. Just like when the Prophet entered into, into um, Mecca as the conqueror, the crownless king, you can say, uh, he was in state of sujood on his camel. Because, the, you know, this would be the time where a person would be arrogant. Now they're entering a city, unless it enter with sujood. Right? وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ And say, حِطَّة Forgive our sins, okay? نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ But they change the word, okay? Into خِنْطَة 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 And they wanted, they wanted that food that they used to have in Egypt, which I'll come to in a minute, okay? نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ We will forgive your sins. Sins وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ But instead, what did they do? فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ so they changed the word to other than the word that was given to them. And then a, 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 a plague-like thing, you know, a, a, this punishment from sky came from to you because of the fusk, uh, the fusuk that you were, the evil that you were doing. And this is a, a Jewish attitude or Bani Israel attitude that's mentioned in Quran over and over again, how they change the words. It'll be mentioned three times just in the first juz. This is the first one. So they change the word other than the word that was given to them. And then because of that, a punishment from the sky came because of the disobedience and fasuq that they were doing. And then on top of that, they also asked Musa والسلام, for the water in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the 12 wells. And remember the time when Musa asked his they asked Musa والسلام, remember the time where Musa asked for his people we said, go ahead, strike, you know, your staff onto this, onto this, this stone. From there came 12 wells. All of the people, all of the tribes knew which of the wells is whose, okay? Look, eat and drink from the risk of Allah, no problem. But don't cause corruption in in the world or on the earth don't okay then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says now <clears throat> this was you know they had manna and salwa right so now they were remembering their food okay that they used to have and of course you know these spices they they charm up the food they make the food taste better so وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى And remember when you said to Musa, لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ تَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ We're not going to be patient over one type of food, right? And this should be the case of our parties or the husbands or when the wives make food. It's not necessarily to make so many foods. This is part of what Quran is indirectly also teaching us. لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ تَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ Just one type of food? Just one type of food? No, no, we have to have different types of food. Right? We want the cucumbers and we want the garlic, right? 
uh, well, fumi has garlic and the uh, the lentils, right? And we want the the uh, the the onions. Wa basaliha and basaliha the onions. Qala tastabdilun aladhi hu adna biladhi hu khair. Then Musa said, "You want these things that come from the earth instead of what Allah is giving you." Qala tastabdilun aladhi hu adna biladhi hu khair. You want the thing that's less for the thing that's better, right? He said, "Ihbitu Misra. Go to the city, then go plow, plow the seeds, and get what you want. Then Ihbitu Misra. Fa'inna lakum masalatu. Misr means not Egypt. Misr means land. Go to the land. Go to the city. Okay. Misr means city. Okay. Ihbitu Misra. Fa'inna lakum masalatu. Indeed, for you there is for whatever you ask. Waduri bata alehi mudillatu wal maskana. Now, what happened after this? Now. The same thing is happening with the Muslim Ummah because لَن تَجِدَ سُنَّةُ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلَ Allah's Sunnah doesn't change from nation to nation, person to person, or group to group. That is وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الدِّلَّةِ We heaped upon them humiliation because of this attitude. Now they were in the desert just dying there. وَالْمَسْكَنَةِ In a state of helplessness. Ummah today is in a state of maskana. We don't know what to do. We're helpless. We're so helpless, we don't even know what to do. This is the same situation. Why? غضب من الله Because they earned the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah. That same thing you pray in Fatiha, that, oh Allah, we don't want your anger. Right? غضب من الله And they earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? ذلك بأنهم كانوا يكفرون بآيات الله This is, Allah is giving you manna and salwa and you want something less than that. Same thing, Allah is giving us the Quran and the Sunnah and the Islamic lifestyle. You want something else? You want you want to go into a different direction than the direction Allah is giving you. Then Doribat alayhim udhillatu wal maskana. Then humiliation and maskana helplessness will be heaped upon you. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ This is because they were denying the ayat of Allah. وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And they were killing the prophets without any just cause. What's happening today? There's no nabi today, but the ulama al-haq, the true ulama, they're being killed. Who goes to jail? Look at all the scholars that are in jail today. And we are doing this and they did this. Right? So this is what the Prophet said. This is how, you know, you have gone beyond all bounds, right? Without any uh, just cause. And they used to go beyond all bounds. Now this is a verse of the Quran that is very much misunderstood. So I want to explain it, uh, inshallah, in a way that will be understood. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Indeed those who believe وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا And the Jews was وَالنَّصَارَى And the Christians والسابعين, And the Sabi'een مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهُ Whoever believes in Allah وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَ And the Day of Judgment وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And does good deeds فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ إِنْ دَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ this ayah doesn't mean that if you believe and if you're Christian, if you're Jew or Sabi'een, you're all equal. No. If that was the case, the ayah would read like this. Now watch. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالَّذِينَ نَصَارَ وَالَّذِينَ سَابِعِينَ Now they're all equal. But over here, there are two brackets. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا In one bracket. Indeed, those who believed. وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَ وَالسَّابِعِينَ Is another bracket. All three in one bracket. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا In one bracket. Why? Because those who believed amongst those that were previously yahadu, inna hudna ilayk. Okay, is referring to the Jews. Those inna hudna ilayk and qalu inna nasara. Those who say we are nasara and sabirin. Those people who believed amongst these people and then they believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment and do good deeds. For them there is la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. This is what the ayah actually means. Also, to keep in mind about this particular ayah is that this ayah is in the past tense. If it said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ And then if it referred the word, وَالَّذِينَ uh, Instead of, هَادُ وَالنَّصَارَ وَالسَّابِعِينَ in in All this instead of the past tense. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا In the past tense. It's referring to the past tense. So those who believed, and also those who believed amongst the Hadu and Nasara was Sabi'in, and those that there were so many other prophets that came besides these groups, right? There are prophets, so many prophets. So it's referring to all the believers of the past, of all the prophets, and specifically amongst these three groups. So this is the proper way to understand this ayah. And in this way, it actually fits into the context of the whole discussion, which is to ask Bani Israel to accept Islam as you see. وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ الطُورِ And remember, when we took a covenant from you, a mithaq from you, right? 
وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورِ And at that time, after everything, Allah took a mountain and put it on top of you. According to one of the narrations, I'm giving you one of the explanations of this ayah. Allah took a mountain and put it on top of them and said, Look, this mountain is coming down to you. Right? Either you accept this guidance or this mountain is going to come and kill you. Right? So what did they do? They had to accept, but they still didn't have the attitude of accepting. وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ وَتُرْخُذُ مَا أَتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَةً Take what we've given you with full strength. وَذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And remember whatever is in it so that you will attain taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكُ That even after that, you after a testing after that, after we put the mountain on top of you, and you agreed, still you turned your back. And Allah still had his fadl, something you didn't even deserve. Fadl is something you don't even deserve. If it was not for the fadl of Allah and his rahmah, you would have definitely been of the losers. But Allah still had mercy. And remember uh, what you uh, and remember of the, the transgressions you did. Right? Uh, regarding the Sabbath. We said to them, become despised as apes, as monkeys. And that, they're becoming apes. Become a, it became like a, uh, a mu'idha, a sermon, a wa'az, you can say a, a warning, a lesson, a lesson, a painful lesson. A painful lesson to learn from. جَعَلْنَهَا نَكَالًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا For what was before them, وَمَا خَلْفَ And those that would come after. Right? Even today we know that that type of transformation will not happen in the Ummah of Muhammad all the time. Even though there's some ahadith that say that it will happen. وَمَا خَلْفَ وَمَوْعِذَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And it is a warning for the people who have taqwa. It's a warning for the people that have taqwa. Now here is another interesting thing. And that is the Prophet Musa a.s. Now the cow is going to be mentioned in a few different scenarios. One was they took the golden calf. Now here's the second. Okay. I'm sure many of the people already know this uh, story. So I'm just going to read the translation. Inshallah, go through this quickly. Remember when Musa a.s. said to, to his people, Allah commands you to Sacrifice the cow. Do you take us as a joke to sacrifice? I seek Allah's refuge. That I be amongst the jahilin. This is the first dua in Quran after Fatiha. So they said, look, okay, fine. What had happened is that a person had been murdered. Okay. And because a person had been murdered, now Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, in order to, there, he was going to perform a miracle, but for this miracle he needed a slaughtered cow, and he was going to take a part of that cow and put it in, strike it on that person's, basically in his mouth, and he was going to come back to life and point out who the killers were. So for that they needed a cow, they could have taken any cow. But because they have something for cows, uh, Bani Israel has something for cows. And this is a longer discussion, but they have something for their cows. And and I'm going to talk about this in more detail when the ayat come regarding this. So say, okay, tell us what type of cow you want. So he said, look, Allah is saying that he wants a cow that's not old, not young, between those, between that. Now go ahead and find a cow like that. They couldn't find a cow like that. Or they didn't find it enough information. They wanted to know more. They said, oh, go, can you ask Allah to clarify for us? What will it be its color? They said, Musa said that Allah said that it will be a cow that will be bright yellow. That will be so delightful when people see it. It'll be so delightful, right? They still couldn't find it. Uh, you know, they said, could you please ask Allah again? We find all the cows to be the same, right? So inshallah, inshallah, right? The fake inshallah, but they said inshallah and the words have powers. Inshallah, inshallah, we will be guided. So now they finally, Musa comes back 
قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرس مسلمة لا شيئة فيها. Look, this is a cow that doesn't tilt the ground, okay? ولا تسقي الحرس doesn't give water to the ground. مسلمة it's very healthy. مسلمة here means healthy. لا شيئة فيها has no progeny or no blemish. If you look at the red heifer, those people who know about the red heifer for the temple, right? They also want لا شيئة فيها. They want no blemish. But in their case, instead of yellow, it's red, okay? قالوا الآن جئت بالحق. They say, oh, now we found, now we got it. جئت بالحق. فزبهوها. They did زب زبيها to it. وما كذو يفعلون. But it was like as if they didn't want, they weren't going to do it. Now referring to that dead person that had died, and now he was going to point to the persons that had killed him. Now that is referring, being referred to here. وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَدَعْرَأْتُمْ فِيهَا And when you killed a soul, you disputed about it. وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly take out regarding that which you were hiding. فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْدِهَا So we said strike it with some of it. Strike it with some of it, with part of it. كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَ وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ And this is how Allah gives life to the dead. وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ And He shows you His signs. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So you will have aql. This ayah can also be looked at in terms of CPR. فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُهُ بِبَعْدِهَا To strike the body. ضَرَبَ means to strike. To strike the body with a part of the other, another part of the body. Right? So like there was the tongue of the cow, for example, if it was put into his mouth, according to some of the riwayas, that's one way. But فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُهُ بِبَعْدِهَا Hit part of it with part of it. Meaning part of that person's body with your part of body. كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَ This is how Allah gives life to the dead. وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ And this is how Allah shows you His signs so that you'll have the aql. But what after all this, after all of this behavior, this attitude, this 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 uh, unending questions and excuses, right? This is what Allah then says. ثُمَّ قَصَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ Then after that, your hearts became hard. After that. فَهِيَ كَالْهِجَارَ They were like stones. أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَصْوَ Even harder than stones. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ Even stones, there are those that rivers, water flows out of the stones. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ And indeed there are some stones that water comes out of it. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِتُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And there are some stones they fall out of the fear of Allah. You ever been on a ride and you know, in, especially in America, there are a lot of times signs, stones falling when you're by the mountain. Right? These are the stones falling from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stones that were there and for no reason now they're falling. وَإِنَّ, وإن مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِتُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is not unaware of whatever you did. Now up till this point is the story of Bani Israel in regards to their relationship at the time of Musa a.s. Now what is coming next is going to be what happened after. Okay, after now is what is after Musa a.s. And what is the current situation in Medina at that time of the Prophet sallallahu the Pro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَتَطْمَعُونَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنَ لَكُمْ Do you have confidence that they'll believe in you? وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقًا مِنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ When a group of them is already listening to the kalam of Allah, to the Qur'an, and or their book, their Torah. They were already listening to their books, and now they're not following their books and not following the Prophet sallallahu not, not saying that they recognize the truth when they do. And they know it's not the truth because they do the following. وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And a group of them is already listening to the book of, uh, the book of Allah. ثُمَّ يُحَرِّفُونَهُ And then they change it with their words. مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَقَلُهُ Even though they understand it, وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they fully know that they were doing this. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا When they meet the believers, they say, قَالُوا آمَنَّا They say, we believe. وَإِذَا خَلَى بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ And they, when they meet one another, they say, قَالُوا بِمَا You know, because when the some of the people would read their books and they would go to the Muslims, they say, yeah, you know, it seems like that that's a sign, one of our signs in the books. So they would say this. So now they're saying to them, أَتُحَدِّثُونَهُمْ بِمَا فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لِيُحَاجُكُمْ بِهِ إِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ Are you going to, you know, expose us in front of them so they have an argument against us on the Day of Judgment in front of Allah? أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you not understand? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this. وَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ 
You're scared that 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 Muhammad and his companions will get to know from you people that yes, these signs, these these signs are really there of the Prophet there, and then you would be exposed and you would have nothing to say. So instead of that, Allah said, Do you not know that I already know everything that you hide? I already know that it's already in your books. Do they not know that Allah knows whatever is hidden and whatever they show? And amongst them are the unlettered people, the Arabs. They didn't know anything. They don't know anything about the book. The Jewish community that was in Medina, they did. Except their own conjectures. And they just make guesswork. And then, whoa, according to one hadith of the Prophet is one of the parts of the hellfire that even the hellfire asks protection from. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Destruction on those people that write the book with their own hands. ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ Then they say this is from Allah. Tawrat is from Allah, but Talmud is not from Allah. But they say they make it equal as if it is from Allah. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ So they can sell it ثمن قليلا for a small price. ثمن قليلا فويل لهم مما كتبت أيديهم woe and destruction for them what they write with their hands وويل لهم ما يكسبون and destruction for them for the earnings that they make. وقالوا and again over here this is exactly what happens with Muslims that happened to the Jewish community before. وقالوا لن تمسنا النار إلا أيام معدودة they say the fire will not touch us except for a few days. We say the same thing. Either we say, Allah is so rahim. Oh, I'm Muslim anyway. I'll go to the hellfire for a few. Or Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will save me. Right? Same same problem. The fire won't touch me except for a few days. Then Allah, what does Allah say to them? What is Allah saying to us? Say, have you taken a promise from Allah? Then Allah won't break his promise then. أَمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Or do you say something about Allah for which you have no knowledge? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ صَيِّئَةً As for the one who earns sayyi'ah, one evil deed, that's a big evil deed, a kaba'ir, a big, وَحَاتَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَةُ And then that, because of that evil deed, and in this case it was one evil deed, of, de of denying the Prophet ﷺ his right to his prophethood, that they were doing, okay? So, but for in our case, it could be any major de bad deed, like it could be riba, eating of riba. It could be, uh, you know, non-stop sins. It could be any uh, one, any of those that we just do no toba over and it just it just overwhelms us and changes us and transforms us. And, and we're like so far from the deen that we don't even, we're not even the same person, right? Or we like lose ourselves. بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً وَأَحَاتَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَةُ فَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Yes, as for the one who earns an evil deed. And then he is surrounded, he's encompassed by his evil deeds, right? Then he is going to be in the hellfire. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They will be in the hellfire eternally. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ As for those who believe and do good deeds, you always have this contrast, right? They're the people of Jannah. Allah make us of the people of Jannah. And then, uh, then this is referring to after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam again. Now this, they would hear the belief. So this is the situation in Medina as I mentioned earlier. And remember when we took the covenant from Bani Israel, don't worship anyone other than Allah. And to be good to your parents this is one of the four places in Quran that mentions being good to the parents. The will qurba and to your relatives, wal yatama and to the orphans, wal masakin and to the people that are in a state of maskana, they're helpless. Wa qulu lil nasi husna and always say good things to people. Wa aqimu salat wa atu zakat. Establish the prayers and give zakat. Thumma tawallaytum illa qalila minhum. Then you all turned your backs to this. Illa qalila minhum, except for a few amongst them. As a whole, you just turn your backs on the covenant and the promises you made with Allah. And then, most ironically, most significantly, And remember, we took the covenant from you. Don't kill yourselves amongst one another. What are Muslims doing today? And Allah told them not to do this, and they did it, and now we're doing it. 
And do not kick your own people out from their own homes. Your own people out, meaning the Jewish tribes. Don't kick each other out. Then you confirmed this. And you were a witness to this. Now this ayah, this ayah, this ayah is so powerful. Then you were killing one another. And you were kicking one group amongst you or one group or another group out of their house. You know, going, extending, uh, overly extending in sin and transgression. First of all, you wouldn't be allowed to kick them out of their houses. Now when you kick them out of their houses, the enemies of the Jewish people, they would take them as captives. Now you would pay for, you would say, it's a good deed, it's a good deed to, you know, release the captives. So you'd pay them the man, ransom money, so then they would be released as captives. But Allah is saying, even though it was haram for you to do the first thing, which is to kick them out, out of the houses that be, made them become uh, captives of war uh, on, uh, by the enemies, right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْأُدْوَانِ وَإِنْ يَأْتُكُمْ أُسَارَةُ فَادُوهُمْ وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْكُمْ إِخْرَاجُمْ It was haram upon you to even take them out. But now you are uh, doing this deed of, uh, of, of, you know, trying to release them from the captivity that they're in because now when you kicked them out, they became weak and the enemies took them. Okay? وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْكُمْ إِخْرَاجُهُمْ Now here is the verse. Islam means to surrender, surrender, surrender. Do you believe in part of the book? And you reject the other part. If this is your attitude, if this is your attitude, what can be the reward of the people that take to this attitude? You're going to follow this big commandment, but not follow this big commandment. Either you take it as whole, it's all or none law in Quran. You take it as whole, or then we don't need you in half type of half commitment or lukewarm commitment. No. You have to do inna uh, salati wa nusuki wa mahya wa mamati. My life, my sacrifice, my life, my death, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ Do you believe in part of the book? وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ And you reject the other part. فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ What can be the reward of the people that take to this attitude? إِلَّا خِزْيُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Except they're put in extreme humiliation in this life. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِ الْأَذَابِ And in the hereafter they will be returned to even a more severe punishment. You see, this is the thing, that the same thing applies to us. Do we believe in part of the book and reject the other? What, believe in one commandment and reject the other? And do, we'll uh, pray, uh, pray some prayers and take riba. So this is not acceptable according to the Quran. It's not acceptable for them and it's not acceptable for us. This will become clear as we continue inshallah. Why did you do some commandments? Because you wanted to. And why didn't you do the other commandments? Because you didn't want to. Then you just, then that's just, you know, that's not really a commitment or a surrendering to Allah. These are the people who have bought this life for the hereafter. The punishment will not be made light for them. And they're not going to be helped from any side. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ And we gave Musa a.s. the book and then after that he was supported by a series of prophets. Over here the word Rasul is made but here Rasul and Nabi in Quran are used synonymously. Just like Jihad and Qital are used synonymously or Iman and Islam are used synonymously. وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And we gave Isa alayhi salatu wasalam clear signs. وَيَدْنَاهُ بِالرُّوحِ الْقُدُسِ And we gave him strength with Ruhul Qudus. أَفَكُلَّ مَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَحْوَىٰ أُنفُسَكُمْ مُسْتَقْبَرْتُمْ Every time a messenger came to you with something that you didn't like, right? بِمَا لَا تَحْوَىٰ أُنفُسَكُمْ مُسْتَقْبَرْتُمْ فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ A group of the prophets, you, you denied them, lied, made a lie out of them, you denied them, rejected them. What فَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ And a group of the prophets, you killed them. وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفٍ I'm going to give only one meaning here. They are, 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 you know, hearts, they're, they have a covering. They say, uh, no matter what you say to us, we're not going to believe. قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفٍ 
Or the other is, قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف We don't need Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Our Our heart is actually purified. It's enveloped. It's like, it's encased. It's special. Or the قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف The other is, that our heart has a covering. It's encased in the negative sense. Meaning we're not going to listen to you. But, but the only, it's not that Allah says, بَلْ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ But the fact is that Allah has cursed it. Cursed means, in Quran, the mercy of Allah is far away. بَلْ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Allah has put la'na, curse, because of their kufr. What is the kufr? The denying of the prophets before and now Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And what? Killing of the prophets. فَقَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Few are you that you believe. Few amongst you are believed. قَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Few, Little is your belief. وَلَمَّا جَاهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَاهُمْ When a وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ When a book, meaning Qur'an, came to them, confirming that which is already with them, meaning their books. When Qur'an came, confirming that which is already in their books. وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْدِهُونَ And they used to say to the Arabs before, that a prophet's going to come and we're going to believe in him, and when we believe in him, then we're going to conquer all of Arabia. وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْدِهُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And they used to say to the pagans, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ And when that came to them, مَعَرَفُوا Of which they now recognized, كَفَرُوا بِهِ They denied it. فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ So Allah's la'na is on the kafirin. Allah's, uh, Allah takes away his mercy from those who reject the truth. بِعْسَ مَشْتَرَوْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ How evil it is what is they, they, they have purchased for themselves. أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ That they deny what Allah has sent down to them. Out of what? بَغِيًا out of power. Baghian is, you know, uh, the idea of Edler is the urge to dominate because they wanted to dominate, they wanted to have their dominance, not to listen to Prophet Muhammad and to be lower. So this urge to dominate is, this is mentioned in Quran many times. Baghian, ayunazila min fadli, out of the urge to dominate, they refused to believe because uh, which Allah had sent down from his fadl. Ala man yasha'u min ibadi over whomever he went willed of his servants. Faba'u bi ghadab bin ala ghadab. So they earned Allah's anger over Allah's anger and more anger. Walil kafirin a'adabu muhin. And for those who reject the truth, it's a very painful and humiliating punishment. Wa idha qila lahum aminu bima anzal Allah. And when it is said to them, come on, believe in whatever Allah has sent down. Qalu an nu'minu bima unzila alayna. We believe in whatever is sent down to us. Wa yakfuna bima wara. And we reject whatever is after us. Meaning Jesus, peace be upon him, is included in that. And Prophet Muhammad is included in that. Wa huwa al-haqqu musaddiqan lima ma'ahum. Even though they have knowledge confirming this already in their own books. Qul falima taqtuluna anbiya Allah. Ask them, why were you killing the prophets of Allah? Min qabl, before, in kuntum mu'mineen. If you, if you were really believers from all this time, then why are you were killing prophets from before? You, in fact, the truth is you have the same attitude. Wa laka ja'akum Musa bil bayyinat. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam came to you with clear sign. ثُمَّ اتَّخَذْتُمُ الْإِجْلَى But you still took the golden calf for worship. مِنْ بَعْدِهِ after him وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ And you were wrong doing. وَإِذَ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ And we took the covenant from you. وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الْتُرْقِ Over here is a review of what was said previously to make concluding remarks. وَإِذَ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا Because that was the past. And then we were talking about the situation in Medina. Now these are the concluding remarks. What happened as a result of all of this? And what is the reality of all of this? وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ الطُّورِ And remember, we took the covenant from you and we raised the mountain on top of you. خُذُوا مَا أَتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ وَاسْمَعُوا We said, look, take what we're giving to you with full power, وَاسْمَعُوا and listen. قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَصَيْنَا They changed the words again. Instead of سَمِعْنَا أَطَعْنَا They said, سَمِعْنَا وَأَصَيْنَا We listen and disobey. Instead of سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرُ And they would have, you know, drink, to drink. The love of something, you like to drink it. وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْعِجَلِ And they had the love of the cow as if they were drinking it. You know, having a drink that they, it was very delightful. And they just needed that drink. They were just thirsty for it, for that cow. وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الْعِجَلَ بِ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Because of their kufr, they were made to love the cow. How evil it is that your iman tells you what it tells you to do. Even today with the red heifer, what an evil thing it is that they 
plan uh, that their iman tells them, their belief system tells them to do. If you're really believers, then what is this nonsense with the love of the cow? And then you'll find also interesting. Allah says, oh, Prophet, tell them, if the hereafter is is in Darul Akhirat in the Allah, if it's really khalis for you, like you know you're going to Jannah. Like for Muslims, I can't say if I'm going to Jannah, right? I can't say that. No one, no Muslim can say that. But if you say, oh, nahnu. Uh, we're the sons of Allah and Allah loves us if you're so sure that sure then you should definitely want death because we want life so we can continue to do good deeds because we we don't know if we're going to Jannah or not then you should wish for death but they'll never wish for it because they know they they have that guilty conscience because of what they have sent before them, meaning the rejection of the Prophet ﷺ, specifically the disobedience of Allah over and over and over again, writing things in the name of Allah that were not meant to be in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alimun bid alimin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows fully well the wrongdoers. nas. You will find them to be the most haris, most greedy of people. Ala haya for life. And the people that do are pagans. Every one of them wishes to live for a hundred years. And having even that life will not save you from the punishment. And Allah has full insight into what you are doing. Now what they would do, there are many narrations about this, but one of them I'll just share with you. They would say to Prophet Muhammad and the believers, that oh which angel is coming to Muhammad? They said Jibreel. So now they started to mock Jibreel. Okay. And the same thing happened in the Ummah of Muhammad. Same thing happened. There was the uh I think Shaykh Ahmad Sarhandi writes in his books that uh, you know some of the Shia they thought that the angel was supposed to go to uh Ali, but it ended up with the Prophet because their ruh, their their spiritual beings were very similar. So that Jibreel went to the wrong person. It was supposed to go to Ali, but it went to the Prophet. Allahu Alam. But over here, the, they would say to the believers, which angel is coming to Muhammad giving this uh, Jibreel? Oh, okay, we don't like him. He always comes with very harsh, you know, these types. So over here, Allah is defending Jibreel and Prophet Muhammad Jibreel. Say, whoever is an enemy to Jibreel, He is the one who sent this down to your heart by the permission of Allah. Uh, confirming that which is already in your books again wahuda and guidance and i'm sure that if we have our experts actually study the the torah and in the injil even more than we have we will find many 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 more signs of the prophet and islam in there than we even already know a guidance and a good news for the believers. Whoever is an enemy to Allah and His angels and His Rasul, His Messenger, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Jibreel and Jibreel, and Mikael, Mikael who brings you risk. Indeed, Allah is the enemy of those who reject the truth. O Prophet ﷺ, we have sent down to you very clear signs. None deny this except for the evildoers. Now hear the concluding remarks and the final result. <coughs> Every time we made a covenant with you, a promise with you, you broke, you threw away the covenant. The fact is most of them don't believe. When a prophet ever came to them confirming that which they already had, every time a prophet came confirming that which they had, right? Nabada for a group of the, them, right? They would just throw the book of Allah behind their backs as if they never had any knowledge of the book of Allah. All this results into what? All this results into this ayah. Over here, let me just show you. 
here are ver uh, verses in the Torah, in the uh, Kings, okay, where it shows that and, and that Suleiman alayhi was worshiping idols, okay, and he was doing these things and and marrying uh, pagan women and so on and so forth, um, and Suleiman followed the such and such goddess and such and such goddess and such and such goddess. You can look this up, okay. So. And they followed instead what? What today has become Kabbalah. Okay? They followed instead, and even the Muslims, again, Muslims, you have Naqsha Sulaimani in this type of, you know, uh, magical charms and, and, and words, and this is also in the Muslim world. And they followed what the Shayateen did Talawa, what they recited to them regarding the kingship of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. That, that he, he, you know, he, he did, he got all his power because of magic. And, and he put all those magical books under his throne, you know. And that throne is in the, where the temple is, uh, where Aqsa is today. So you gotta remove that Aqsa, you gotta dig into it, you gotta find those books, and then you'll become all powerful. So this is kinda like what it is. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانَ Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam didn't do kufr. وَلَكِنَّ shayateena kafaru. But the shayateen did kufr. يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ And they used to teach who? They taught people how to do sihr. They taught people how to do magic. And in order to counter this magic, two angels came down who would then teach people the difference between something of magic, meaning from the world of the jinns and the shayateen, versus a miracle from Allah. Because they both look the same in this world of asbab, in the world of cause and effect, they would look the same. But Allah is explaining here that even this thing, this magic, is in fact part of the world of cause and effect. Because whatever happens, happens by the will of Allah. And so Allah explains here, وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلَ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ And we did not send the two angels, Harut and Marut. وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَ They didn't teach anyone. Look, we'll teach you how to tell if it's a prophet, if it's a real miracle, or if it's shaitan. But instead of taking this knowledge for knowing which is the truth, they took this knowledge to associate themselves with shayateen and to start working for shayateen and selling themselves to shayateen. Hatta yaqula inna ma nahnu fitnatun fila takfur until they said, "Look, we're gonna we can teach you this, but don't do kufr." Fatallamuna minhu ma ma yufarriquna bihi bain al mar'i wa zawji, and they also taught them in this process what would divide the husband and the wife, how to use shaytan and magic to divide the husband and the wife. بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله. But they couldn't hurt anyone except by the permission of Allah, because this magic is also part of this world of this world of happening and world of cause and effect and أحداث. وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله. ويتعلمون ما يضرهم. And they taught them things that would hurt them ولا ينفعهم and would not benefit them. ولقد علموا لما نشتراه ما له في الآخرة من خلاق. And they knew whoever would purchase this. He had no portion in the hereafter. How evil it is that they have, how evil it is with what they have sold themselves. If they did but even know. And if they had believed and fear Allah, it would have been a better reward from Allah. خير. It would have been a good reward for them if they did but know. But again, this is now the third time how they change the words, right? Ya yuhalladina amanu la taqulu ra'ina because when the, the Jews would ra'ina means pay attention, give me some time, okay? But they ra'ina means our shepherd, so they would make mock. Oh, you know, he said that you know, like making fun of the words, and you still see this in the media today by the uh, by 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 the media doing this all the time, playing with the words. Right? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقُولُوا رَائِنَا وَقُولُوا نُزُنَّا But instead say a word that they can't mock the Prophet. Use it indirect way to make the fun of the Muslims and the Prophet ﷺ. أُنزُرْنَّا وَاسْمَعُوا Prophet, please give, pay, pay attention to us and listen to us. وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And for the, for, the, for the disbelievers, those who reject the truth, is a painful punishment. مَا يُوَذَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ أَن يُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ the, they don't wish amongst the people of the book and the pagans. They don't wish that any good comes to you from your Rabb. Wallahu yaqtasu bi rahmatihi man yasha. Allah chooses for his rahmah whoever he wills. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. And the fadl of Allah is great. He gives it to whoever he wills. And in this case, it was the Prophet. 
the next now part of this is going to be about the Christian and Muslim dynamics. So let's quickly look at this and then I'll come back, inshallah. So you have Musa, Bani Israel and Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Bani Israel after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, okay. And this is where we are at now, okay. So now we're going to look at the dynamics of Christianity, Judaism and Islam and different aspects of this. And then after this, the ending will be with Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the correct belief. So for now, I will come back inshallah. Over this, this verse is also a very important verse to understand. Uh, we don't cancel any verse, okay? Oh, nunsiha, nor we got, make it forgotten. Except we come with something better than it. Oh, mithliha, or something equal to it. Do you not know Allah has the power to do all things? Why was this ayah revealed? Over there, Quran kept saying, confirming that which you already have, confirming, confirming that which you already have. So the objection was, wait, but the Sharia of Muhammad is a little bit different. They, for example, in the Sharia of the Banu Israel, you can drink wine. And in the Sharia of Muhammad وسلم, you couldn't. Like this, there were other aspects. For example, um, you know, uh, there were aspects that they saw. Uh, there were a lot of similar aspects that they saw, but some aspects they saw different. So here is the answer being given to that. Number one, this means that the previous Torah, the previous books, all of them, Torah, Injil, Zubur, they've been cancelled. Not in the sense of being cancelled, because they're the word of Allah. It can't be cancelled. But cancelled in it because you have changed them. Okay? And also what? That the khayr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps coming, and the khayr means that because the times are changing, because the situation is changing, the circumstances are changing, new laws are going to be there. Now, you're not going to give the caveman the laws of economics that are in Quran, right? You're not going to give a tribal society laws that uh, that don't have to do with tribal society. So from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to the end of time, now basically th this is, you can say from an Islamic perspective, this is one era. You know, this is the era of the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم. And in this time, these there has to be, there is some adjustments to the law. This is one aspect of it. The second meaning is within Quran itself, maybe a command came, even though the idea was still the same, but then another command came, and then another command came. Okay. For example, about Ramadan, first ayah will come, make it not making it mandatory, but encouraging fasting. Not Ramadan, but fasting in general. And then the ayahs of Ramadan came, make, making fasting mandatory. Like this you have for Salah, where after which then the five prayers were made uh, mandatory. About alcohol is also you have, don't go near prayer while you're intoxicated. You have many, uh, four or three ayahs depending upon how you look at it. For that they were revealed over time. So, We don't cancel out any verse or we cause it to be forgotten from the people's minds or consciousness. Not to be minha, except we come with something better. Allah always comes with something better. Aw mithniha, or something like better than that, or is or or equal to that. Alam ta'alam an Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Now here, over here, I want to mention, uh, if we can go back here, Banu Israel after Musa. Now ayahs number one hundred four to one twenty one. The discussion here is the Christian Muslim dynamics, Christian Muslim Jewish dynamics. And the dialogue with the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims, and also a little bit of a dialogue with the pagans. Okay, some interesting topics will be mentioned here. Over here, I also want to mention this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that I was referring to earlier today. The Prophet said, وسلم, sunna min qablikum. You will follow the sunnas of the people before you. Shibran bin shibran, handspan by handspan, zira'an bi zira'an. Like, for example, one arm's length by one arm's length. Right? Hatta law salaku. Uh, if there would be uh, a lizard going into a hole, then certainly one of you would do the same thing. 
And then they sent, Qulna Ya Rasulullah, al Yahud wa Nasara. Is this referring to the Jews and the Christians? The Prophet said, Faman, who else? Okay, so whatever is being referred about Bani Israel in Quran is in fact a mirror reflection. Is this not happening to us? Or rather, this sh it shouldn't be happening to us, but it is. And so, because we would act just like the previous people. And so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, now, from here is now a dialogue. Alam ta'alam anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal Do you not know that the kingship belongs to Allah in the heavens and the earth? Wa ma lakum min dunillahi min wali wa la nasir. And you have no other other than Allah a wali or a nasir. No helper, nor a friend, nor a protector. Meaning what? He's the king. He gives the decrees. He gives the law. He changes it when he wants to. But you can definitely tell it's all coming from one source. That's the point. Are you going to, oh, companions of the Prophet ﷺ, are you going to behave the way the people of Musa behaved with him? Do you want to ask your Prophet questions in the same attitude? It's not asking the questions, not the problem. It's the attitude with the excuses, like Musa was before. Whoever exchanges Iman for Kufr, He's gone the wrong way. What the kafirum in Ahlil Kitabi la rodukum in bad the Imanukum kufara hasada min indi and pusihim. What the kafirum in Ahlil Kitab. So many of the people of the book they wish la yorodukum in bad the Imanukum kufara to change you from your state of Iman to kufar. Hasada min indi and pusihim out of out of jealousy what is within themselves. Min bad the matabayan alahum al haq after the truth has been clarified for them. Fa'fu wasfahu is very important. Fa'fu just be kind to them. Fa'fu just overlook them. Fasfahu safha, you know, just turn the other way. Hatta yati Allahu bi amri. This internal problem that's in Medina with the with the uh, with the Bani Israel, the internal problem, we'll deal with it later. Hatta yati Allahu until Allah's command comes. First, deal with the external problem, which is the Quraysh. And in this, there's a lot of wisdom. For the people that will think about this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, hold on to this problem, deal with that problem, and then deal with this problem later. Allah has the power to do all things. And establish the prayers and give the zakat. And whatever you've sent forward for yourselves of good things, you'll find it with Allah. In Allah, indeed, Allah has full insight into what you do. Now, here's the dynamics. When the two communities that hated each other, the Jews and the Christians, come together as one, then that chemistry is very bad for the... That's a very bad and a very negative chemistry for the Muslims. Okay? So the normal state is, the Jews say Christians have nothing of, of truth, and the Christians say the Jews have nothing of because the history is in its reality that the Christians killed uh, the the Jewish people killed the Christian God, okay, meaning Isa alayhi salam. So this animosity has been there for two thousand years, but now you find this time this civilization where the Judeo Christian civilization has become like one. And they say, you won't enter into Jannah unless you're a Jew or a Christian. These are, these, these are their uh, wishful thinking. Bring your proof in Kuntum if you're truthful. So here's the dialogue. It's a very interesting dialogue. But this is what Allah wants. But no. Whoever surrenders his whole self to Allah, and he's really sincere. Then he'll have a reward with his Lord. There's no fear upon them and nothing to be sad about. Over there it is. You won't enter Jannah unless you're Christian or Jew. Here, and the Yahud say the Nasara have nothing. They have nothing. They have no standing. And the Nasara say, the Christians say, the Jews have nothing. Even though they're reading the same book. And that has specifically happened after the, uh, the, the Protestant movement, where they're both reading the Old Testament. And so the, the Judeo 
Christianization of the Christianity has taken place. And so they've become like one. They read the same book. This is exactly what the people before them, they said. Those who have knowledge of the book, they said the exact same thing. They don't have anything. Okay. فَاللَّهُ يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِيمَا كَانُوا فِي يَخْتَلِفُونَ Allah will judge on, uh, for them on the Day of Judgment about the things that they differed. This ayah here is very interesting. وَمَنْ and, and what is the peak of when the Jews and Christians come together, the peak of the dhulm that they do and the dhulm that they will do is to break the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Break the, like Abraha went to destroy Makkah, right? The same way the Christians went to destroy the, the Haikali Sulaimani, the the temple of the, the, to destroy the worships, the places of worship in its general uh, sense. And in Islamic eschatology sense, this also when the Jews and Christians, the Jew Christian civilization coming together in the form of Zionism to break the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُ Who can be more wrong? مِمَّنْ مَنْعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكُرَ فِيهَا أَسْمُ أَنْ يَذْكُرَ فِيهَا أَسْمُ وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا Who stops people there from remembering the name of Allah and sarafi was sarafi kharabiha and he struggles to make it kharab to make it bad to make it destroyed ulaika ma kana lahum an yadkhuluha for these people it is not to enter into illa khaifin even those muslims that are sellouts now they should be scared of going into a masjid lahum fi dunya khizyun for them is in the end in this world even humiliation wa lahum fil akhirati adhabun azim and for them is a painful punishment in the hereafter wa lillahi al mashriq wa al maghrib this is the beginning of the discussion of now because we're coming to the end of the discussion about not yet oh, totally about 30, 20 some verses left uh, the discussion of the charge sheet that was against bani israel and why a new ummah is coming in its place right the beginning of this is this wa lillahi al mashriq wa al maghrib the east and the west belong to allah Meaning this is the beginning of the discussion of the change of Qibla, which is the complete now, you can say, change, absolute change of creating a new Ummah and the, the custodianship of the Book of Allah being given to a new Ummah. So Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ فَأَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn Allah's face is there. In Allah وَاسِيُّنْ alim, Allah is very, very expansive in his knowledge he has full knowledge of he he knows the knowledge of the east and the west these things don't make a difference to him it is we that we get lost in the externalities for allah is and they say allah has taken a son this can be referring to christians and okay also referring to the pagans who you know made um uh the angels the daughters of allah they say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, taken a son subhanahu but no he is perfect but the huma fi samawati wa ma fi al ard look for him is whatever is in the heaven and the earth kullun lahu qanitun everything is obedient to him but the samawati wal ard he is the one who did ibda he started the creation new new ex helio he started everything from nothing and then khalq is the creating something from creation the raw material is there and you create something okay and then tadbir and then you have the planning of what its destiny is this is what Imam Shawli Allah Muhaddas Dilmi has pointed out is the three basic attributes. Allah does ibda' badiyu samawati wal ard idha qada amran when he decides an affair fa'inna ma yakulu lahu kun fa'yakun when he says to an affair be then it just is. It becomes. It already is. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ لَا يُكَلِّمُنَ اللَّهُ أَوْ تَعْتِينَ آيَةً And those people who have no knowledge of the book they say why doesn't Allah talk to us? The pagans. The pagans have no knowledge of the book, okay? Oh, ta'atina ayah, why does a sign, a miracle come to us? كَذَلِكَ قَالُوا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِثْلَ قَوْلِهِمْ This is exactly what the people before said. تَشَابَهَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When people say the same thing as other people, then their hearts are similar. For example, very simple example. If I like to talk about money and another person likes to talk money, then there's something similar about our heart, right? So when we raise objections, when, when we do these things, we behave in a certain way, then our hearts are similar to other people that are behaving just as we are behaving, okay? This is exactly what the people before said, exactly like this. They have similar hearts. We've already clarified our signs for people that will believe. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ بِالْحَقِّ O Muhammad sallallahu We have sent you in truth بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا To give good tidings and to give warning. 
and O Prophet وسلم, you're not going to be asked about the people in the hellfire. And the Jews and the Christians will not be happy. The Judeo-Christian civilization, when it becomes happy, they will not be happy until you follow their civilization, their Milla. But the guidance Allah wants is different. The guidance of Allah is the guidance. And just even though the khatab here, the addressee here is Prophet Muhammad, but the address is actually to us. O Prophet if you were to follow their desires, after knowledge has come to you, then you have no helper and no wali, no protector, no helper. But there are people amongst Bani Israel that what? There are those people that have been given the book and then they do they yatlunahu haqqatila. They read the book as it ought to be read. They are the ones who really believe in the Torah. And those who deny the truth, they are the ones that are in loss. You can take this ayah also in regards to Quran. Those people have been given the book, they read it as it ought to be read. They're the ones who believe in it. Those who deny, those who reject this, deny this, don't do this, they're the ones that are at loss. Now again here. Ya Bani Israel, O oh, Bani Israel, remember my favor upon you. I chose you at one time above all human. You still have time. Inni faddaltukum ala alalamin. I I chose you. I favored you over all humanity. Wattaqu yawman. Look, this is the final. Wattaqu yawman la tadzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a. This same similar verses came. Two verses came before. Wattaqu fear. Yawman la tadzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a. On the day where no soul will help another soul. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا عَدْمٍ Nor any ransom will be taken from them. وَلَا تَنْفَعُهَا شَفَاءَ Nor any benefit of shifa of intercession will be done. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْصَرُونَ Nor will they be helped. Now from here a new topic begins. Now, actually all three, Christian, Muslims, Jews, they all go back to the, they all consider their father to be Ibrahim. And even the pagans of Mecca. Because these are also, the Quraysh is the children of Ibrahim also. So all four, in fact. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, okay, why don't we go back to the the, the father of all of this, the, the friend of Allah, Khilulullah Ibrahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَّمَّهُمْ Look, Ibrahim is that abd of mine, that servant of mine, that when I, te I tested him with so many commandments, right? And I, we won't go into details right now, but tested him from, from his childhood, to believing in Allah and being thrown in the fire and, and sacrificing his son. With so many commands, he passed all of them. Then Allah said, I'm going to make you a leader of mankind. You want to be a leader? Then you have to pass all the tests. And my progeny, my promise will not reach the wrongdoers, which is the Quraysh against the Prophet Muhammad Okay? وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ And remember, and when we made the, the house of Allah a mathab, a place of returning for the people, وَأَمْنَ And a place of peace, this haram, this, not Arabia, okay? Uh, not all of Arabia, just the haram itself is a place of peace. وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And take for yourselves the maqam of Ibrahim as a place to pray. وَاهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَن تَحْحِرَ بَيْتِيَ and we took a covenant from Ibrahim and Ismail to purify my house for the people that go around do tawaf and those people that do uh, put themselves in seclusion in the masjid of Allah and the people that do ruku and sujood. So the link with Mecca is being mentioned, which is clear. And then the uh, story of Ibrahim in terms of his tawhid, oneness of Allah is going to be mentioned. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا And remember when Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, make this a, a balad, a land of peace. وَرْزُقْ أَحْلَهُ مِنَ ثَمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And give rizq to those people who, who believe in Allah in the Day of Judgment. 
قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا So Allah responded, no, even the disbeliever, those who reject the truth, even them, I'll provide them a little bit of this world, that's fine. ثُمَّ أَتَّرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ Then I'll force him into the hellfire, وَبِعْسَ الْمَصِيرِ Now what is, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِمُ قَوَائِذَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ And remember the time when Ibrahim was raising the foundations of the house of the Allah, and Ismail, Rabba, and what were they saying? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الصَّمِيُونَ عَلِيمٌ O oh Allah, except from us, indeed you are all hearing, all knowing. Okay, So the issue of Mecca and the Bible needs to be properly researched to make these connections further stronger. What? Did, how did they pray to Allah and what about Ibrahim? رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ This was, he wasn't, did Ibrahim, and this will come up, Ibrahim didn't call himself Jew or Christian or any of this, right? So رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ O oh Allah, make us two, meaning Ibrahim and Ismail, make us two, Muslimaini lak, surrendering to you. Wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimatan. And from our dhurriya, from our progeny, make us an ummah muslima. By the word, muslima is used by Jewish people as a terminology. Lak, for you. Wa arina manasikana, and show us our, our, our rites, that, our rituals that we need to do, our ways of worshipping you. Wa tub alayna, and forgive us. Inna ka anta tawwab rahim. Indeed, you are a tawwab ar rahim. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ Now here's the dua for Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ And raise amongst them a messenger that will do what? يَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ That will do four things. يَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ Recite to you your ayat, your, your Qur'an. Your... وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Teach them the book and the wisdom. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And purify them. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Whoever turns away from the millah of Ibrahim, إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيهَا نَفْسَ In fact, he's made himself foolish. وَلَقَدْ اسْتَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا We chose him in this life. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And he is going to be amongst the righteous people in the hereafter. وَإِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ What were the Jews not doing? They weren't surrendering. So this, you know, Ibrahim surrendered to Allah. It was all about surrendering to Allah. It's all about Islam. وَإِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ And remember when Allah said to him, أَسْلِمْ, surrender. قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I surrender myself fully to Rabbul الْعَالَمِينَ وَوَصَوَ بِهَا إِبْرَاهِمُ بَنِهِ وَيَعْقُبِ And remember when Ibrahim was giving advice to his children and Yaqub when he was in his deathbed. يَا بَنِيَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ Oh my children, Allah has chosen a way of life for you. Astafa lakum ad-deen, a deen for you. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslim. Don't die except you've already surrendered to Allah completely and fully. Am kuntum shahada id hadar al Yaqub al maut. And also remember, where you were, you were not present there when Yaqub was on his deathbed. If qala li banihi when he said to his children, Ma ta'abuduna min ba'di, who will you worship after me? Qalu na'abudu ilahaka wa ilaha aba'aka Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq, ilahan wahidan wa nahnu lahu muslimun. So he said, Ma ta'abuduna min ba'di, who will you worship after me? Qalu na'abudu, they responded, the children, and Yaqub responded, ilahaka, your lord, meaning Ibrahim's lord, wa ilaha, sorry, Yaqub, talking to Yaqub, ilahaka, the lord of, the Rabb and Allah of Yaqub wa ilaha aba'aka and the Rabb of your father Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq ilaha wahida the one true Lord wa nahnu lahu muslimun and we only surrender to him tilka ummatun qad khalat this is an ummah that came that is gone laha ma kasabat for them is what they are going to earn wa lakum ma kasabtum now you have to decide your fate you're going to get what you earn wa la tus'alu an ashab وَلَا تُسْأَلُوا عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ You will not be asked about what they used, what they did. They made the choices for themselves. They made the choice to surrender to Allah. Now, قَالُوا كُونُوا وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَ تَحْتَدُوا They say, be Jew or Christian, you'll be guided. قُلْ But no. بَلْ مِنْ لَا تَعِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا But no, be this of the civilization or the مِنْ لَا أَوْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا That civilization that was bent on oneness and single-mindedness. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And they did not do shirk. He did not do. وَمَا كَانَ And he was not amongst the people that did shirk. قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِمِ قُولُوا And say, O Prophet, قُولُوا Say to them, 
Amanna billah, we believe in Allah. Wa ma unzila alayna, what has been sent down to us? Wa ma unzila ila Ibrahim, and whatever is sent down to Ibrahim, wa Ismail, and is Ismail, wa Ishaq, and Ishaq, wa Yaqub, and Yaqub, wa Asbath, and the tribes, wa ma utiya Musa wa Isa, and whatever was given to Musa and Isa, wa ma utiya nabiyuna min rabbihim, and whatever the prophets were given, uh, all the prophets were given from their Lord, la nufarriqu bain ahad minhum. We don't make any distinction between them. There's difference between Fadila, who is on top, who has more Fadila, who has less Fadila, or different prophets. One prophet has one special characteristic or another. This is one, this is Fadila. Well, Fadlna ba'dahum ala ba'd. We gave some of them ranks upon the others. And Tafriq is to deny one prophet. Do you accept, let's say, Ten prophets and deny two. This is now. La nufarriqu bayna ahadim minhum. We don't make any distinction between them except all of them. Ahadim minhum wa nahnu lahu muslimun. Now this ayah is very important. Fa in amanu bi mithli ma amantum bi. If they believe as you have believed, meaning the companions of the Prophet, fa qadih tadaw. Then you will be guided. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are a very important part of the imaniyat, the belief system. Whenever anyone's iman has gone wrong, it's gone wrong because of their neglect of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. If they believe as you all have believed, meaning the companions, then you'll be guided. And if you turn your backs, if you turn away from the companions, you'll be just in disarray. Uh, if you turn away from traditional Islam, which looks at the companions of the Prophet, for example, the Shia, okay? They don't look at the companions of the Prophet. Like, why is this? There are many other groups. Say, Allah Allah is enough for you. And he is all hearing, all knowing. When Usman radiallahu was killed, the blood that was, when he was killed, Shaheed, the blood went on the Quran on this part of the ayah. Say, Allah Allah will be enough for you against them. Sibratullah, the color of Allah. You know, or you can say this is also considered baptism according to some of the tafsirs. So, you know, you have like a... Uh, so, min Allahi sibgha. And what can be better than the color of Allah? وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ Over there you had وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Over here وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ And we are, to him, we are true servants. Okay? True servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ أَتُحَاجُونَنَا فِي اللَّهِ وَهُوَ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ لَنَا عَمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُخْلِصُونَ Over here is وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُخْلِصُونَ قُلْ أَتُحَاجُونَنَا Do you argue with us في اللَّهِ about Allah when we all agree وَهُوَ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ He's my Rabb and your Rabb لَنَا عَمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُخْلِصُونَ For us is our deeds and for you is your deeds وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُخْلِصُونَ and we are sincere to him and this ayah is very important أَمْ تَقُولُونَ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاتِ كَانُوا هُدًا أَوْ نَصَارَى Do you say that Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Ya'qub and Asbat, the tribes, were either Christian, Jews or Christian? قُلْ أَأَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُ أَمِ اللَّهِ Do you know where Allah knows? وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُ Who is more wrong? مِمَّنْ كَتَمَ شَحَادَةً Than the one who hides a testimony that he has. عِنْدَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ With himself from, from Allah. Allah gave him a testimony and he's hiding it. You know fully well that Ibrahim was not Yahud because this term didn't even come into existence until Judea came to existence. And Isa والسلام, didn't call himself Nasara. The word Christianity, for example, was used by the enemies of Jesus, peace be upon him. This is an ummah that is gone. And for it will be what it earned. وَلَكُمْ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ And for you is what you will earn. You will answer for yourself. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be asked about the things that they used to do. So this is the end of the first juz. And so I want to show you very quickly what did we... So this was Prophet Ibrahim in the correct belief, right? Now very quickly I will go over... So what we discussed in Surah Al-Baqarah so far, Ayahs 1 through 5, the true believers, those who reject the truth, the hypocrites, the, the parable of the uh, of the double-minded people and the people that reject the truth, the call of the Qur'an, the divine plan for creation, Islam and the rabbis, Bani Israel at the time of Musa wasalam, Bani Israel after Musa wasalam, then the dynamics that had to do with Islamic eschatology, where Judeo-Christian would become one. Islam, Christianity and Judaism, a very thorough dialogue with that uh, discourse with the Christian world and the Judaic world. In the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim and the true belief, this is where the first Jews 
ends. So inshallah, pray for me that Allah helps me do the whole of the Quran like this. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat.